I'll call this meeting to order. And as we get started tonight, uh, before we move to the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm going to ask you to join me for a moment of silence. Thank you. All right, I'm going to stand. I have a flag behind me. Uh, so if you'll join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, next that will take us to roll call. So I'll turn to our city clerk. Commissioner Moody. Present. Mr. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. Jones? Here. Commissioner Lanier? Present. Commissioner Ruppert? Here. Commissioner Isasi? Present. Mayor Bliss? Mayor Bliss, are you here? I am here. I had a little glitch, so that happens from time to time on my computer. Um, thank you, City Clerk. Uh, and then uh, I, I, before I introduce our uh, translator tonight, I want to remind folks that there's two opportunities for public comment tonight. One at the beginning of the meeting on items that we're actually voting on. So items that are on our agenda that we'll be casting a vote on tonight. And then at the end of the meeting for uh, just general public comment on any other item. And so how you can weigh in tonight is you can call 311 or you can call 456-3000. You can hit uh, number one and then for the first opportunity for public comment, which I'll, I'll get to momentarily, you can hit one. And if you want to, uh, if you have something you want to talk about that's not on our agenda tonight, then you can hit number two. Uh, what will happen is that you'll be put in a queue. We ask you to share a couple things. We ask you to share your name, the city that you live in, and then we'll give you up to three minutes to speak. For the first opportunity for public comment, we ask that you identify the exact item on the agenda that we're voting on that you want to speak to. So if it's uh, community development number two or fiscal number three, um, please just let us know what you're referring to. Uh, so with that, I'd like to introduce our translator who's with us tonight, Ms. Lilibeth Perez, uh, so that she can also provide you with instructions in Spanish. Is Ms. Perez? Thank you, Ms. Perez. There you are. Hi, hi, hi Ms. Perez. Good evening. Um, if you need interpretation services in order to address the city commission, I will be able to assist. You just please call 311 or 456 3000. Choose option one and then choose the option you wish to speak on. Buenas noches. Si necesita servicios de interpretación para dirigirse a la comisión de la ciudad, podré ayudarle. Llame al 311 o 456 3000 y elija la opción uno y luego la opción en la que desea hablar. Thank you. All right, so this will take us to our first opportunity for public comment. And again, this is on items that we are voting on tonight. Uh, and so I'll turn to our city clerk to let us know if there's anyone in the queue. Sure. Daniel, um, what do we have? Uh, good evening. There is no one in the queue for this public comment. Um, however, if someone wishes to comment for the second portion, they select number one and then option four, not oh. two. It's, it's a little hinky, this one. So. Option four is the selection. Okay, thank you for uh, clarifying that. That's good to know. Sorry, I just... welcome. Okay, I think I'll just give it a, a couple a couple moments. We'll see if anyone does call in for um, to speak on items we're working on tonight. Someone has joined the queue. I will put them through right now. Okay, great. Thanks. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Mario. I'm a community liaison at LinkUp. I'm not sure if I'm coming to get the right time, but I got the LinkUp letters regarding the uh, uh, budget cuts to community engagement by the Glen Evans Police Department on the docket. So I'd like to comment on that. It seems to me that those, the fight to get that to not be cut, it feels like a precursor to what's happening for us right now, and that's exactly the reason why we don't need to cut community engagement. Please, please, please. Uh, uh, th thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you, let you know that we, uh, that is not on our agenda tonight. I think you're referring to some of the items that we talked about at our last meeting, which was part of our budget discussion, and uh, where we, we did actually 
uh, get a lot of feedback from, from organizations and made some adjustments to the budget specific to that item that you're speaking to. Thank you. I apologize. I may have looked at the wrong schedule. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's okay. Appreciate your input. All right. Appreciate you there. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. All right, Daniel, is there anyone else in the queue? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, next up, we'll take you to approval of the minutes. And this is from our last commission meeting on May 19th. Can I get a motion? Move. So, support. Right. Move. So move. Thank you. Moved and supported. Commissioners, do you have any questions or comments? All right, seeing none, I'll turn to our city clerk for the vote. Um, Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Rappart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Yes. And Commissioner Moody? Yes. And Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, so that will take us to our petitions and communications, and we have six items tonight. Yeah, and I think this may be where the caller had a little confusion because we had a communication from Link Up from the last meeting, but it was after our after our last time, but it's not something we're voting on. So we had a first one is communication received from Link Up, including 42 signed letters expressing concern over the Proposed cuts to the community engagement efforts within the Grand Rapids Police Department budget. Okay, that is received and filed. Communication received from Emily Carbonell Ferguson regarding police policy changes. That's received and filed. Communication received from Stephanie Kelsey regarding a city contact person for police reform questions. That's received and filed. Communication received from Josh Carpenter regarding police reform and recommendations. That is received and filed. Communication received from Grace Kelly with questions for the City Commission regarding local law enforcement and community resources. That's received and filed. Communication received from Sharonda Bridgeforth expressing opposition to the implementation of our curfew and deployment of the National Guard. And that is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to reports of city officers. And there are three items before us tonight. The first one is Comptroller's Report for the period of May 7, 2020 through May 20, 2020, in the amount of $16,024,602.85. All right, that's received and filed. Comptroller's Financial Report, April 2020 through fiscal year 20. That's received and filed. And Treasurer's Report for the period of May 2, 2020 through May 15, 2020. And that is also received and filed. All right, commissioners, next that will take us to our consent agenda and reports from our standing committees. Uh, and before I ask for a vote for that, I would uh, like to request that we remove uh, an item from consent, uh, and that is fiscal item number five. And uh, I'm requesting that that be removed because one of our colleagues will need to uh, abstain. So can I get a motion uh, to remove item five from the consent agenda? Hello. Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, City Clerk, do you need to call a vote for that? Yep, we probably should. Okay. Um, Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Jones? <clears throat> yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. All right, so we'll remove item five and that will take us back to the consent agenda minus uh, fiscal item number five. So can I get a motion for the consent agenda? So All so right, on. thank you, moved and supported. Commissioners, any questions or comments about the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, I'll turn to our support to call a vote. Commissioner Lanier. <laughs> Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Rappart? Yes. And Mayor Bliss? Yes, it carries. All right, commissioners, that will take us to items removed from consent and we will have before us uh, fiscal item number five. Mayor, uh, need in from this vote because of a con conflict of interest. Okay, thank you. All right, City Clerk, you want to read this or do you want me to? Um, I, can, I can read it. It is a resolution approving a professional services agreement with proponents LLC in the amount of $35,000. All 
Okay, thank you. Uh, and I think I'll call on uh, Commissioner O'Connor. You want to tell us about this? I'll move it. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Yep. Support. <laughs> Moved and supported. Uh, Commissioner O'Connor, you want to tell us about this item? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mary. Uh, this is a contract um, for our, our community's children department to do some analysis of uh, some of their programming uh, to ensure its effectiveness. Great, thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions? All right, I'll turn to our city clerk, city clerk for a vote. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. And an abstention by Commissioner Ruffart? Yes, thank you. All right, that carries. Uh, welcome, Commissioner Ruffart, back to us. Uh, and that will take us to ordinances to be adopted. And commissioners, we have one ordinance before us tonight. If the ordinance is a series ordinance for water supply system revenue bonds. All right, can I get a motion? So moved. Support. Move, moved and supported. Uh, Commissioner Rappart, you want to tell us about this? Yeah, these are uh, back in April. We we approved our, our notice for the for these this water supply these bonds, fifty million dollars for the water supply system, mm -hmm. and that forty five day period uh, is expired on May thirty first. Uh, so one or more bond series are proposed to provide up to fifty million dollars in bond proceeds to pay all or a portion of the cost of contributing system improvements and related components and in public infrastructure directly affected by these improvements. So this is improvements to the Lake Michigan water filtration plant, tanks, pump stations, facilities, Thorn Apple River water main, water distribution system, Coldbrook pumping station, and other water services throughout the city. Okay, great. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, this is a, a roll call vote tonight. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. All right, commissioners. Uh, so we didn't have any uh, items on our list for city commission resolutions, uh, but after our Conversation this morning, uh, our city attorney sent out additional information on the uh, resolution to extend the declaration of emergency, which I wanna be really clear, that's different than um, curfew, uh, which I think this morning, those two items kind of got uh, connected together. So my apologies if there was some confusion also that information wasn't sent out ahead of time. Uh, for us to have a more thorough conversation about this that this morning. So information was sent out to you about that, about that, the act, as well as a draft resolution. So if we did want to have a conversation about that resolution, uh, we would do that under this section, uh, but it would require support to suspend the rules. So I will. Uh, Madam Mayor, I, I move to suspend the rules. Okay, is there support to suspend the rules? Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, so to suspend the rules, uh, City Clerk, you want to call the vote for that? Yeah, Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Repart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. All right, so rules are suspended. Uh, and uh, you do, all of you received, I, and I apologize, uh, you didn't receive this earlier, um, but we did receive all the information from our, our city attorney. Um, right after our committee of the whole meeting. Uh, so uh, you should have a copy of the resolution before you. If you want to bring it up for discussion, I um, will turn to one of you to make that motion if you want to. Um, I'll move to uh, approve the resolution authorizing an extension of the state of civil emergency. All right, I have a motion. Do I have support for that? Support. All right, moved and supported. Uh, so all of you received a draft. What I'd like to do is turn to our city manager to kind of walk us through and maybe provide a little more explanation on why this was one of the recommendations. Our city attorney is also available. And uh, I think the, I don't know if the city manager wants to turn to anyone else, but if you could provide us some information and clarity on 
uh, this request, or I shouldn't say request, but this resolution around extending the um, current civil state of or state of civil emergency. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Just to put it in context. So this morning, we had a public safety update around our ability to surround, uh, to respond to some of the uh, safety threats that we've had since the riots on Saturday, which was a result of um, very peaceful protesting that turned um, unexpectedly violent, but not by the intended organizers. And one of the uh, tools we talked about that would help us to ensure the safety of our community uh, was the use of a curfew. Uh, this morning after discussion, there was um, not a lot, not the majority of the commissioners were not interested in the curfew, but there is the curfew is a derivative of a tool that we have uh, through uh, the ability to declare a state of civil emergency. So when the mayor uh, and I met earlier on uh, Sunday morning after the uh, riot, uh, she enacted her power to claim a state of civil emergency for 48 hours. And after that it expired, it required the um, ratification or approval of the city commission to continue. Under that, she would have the ability to do several things in the name of public safety and, and a curfew would be one of them, but it also would allow us to ask for state resources uh, to be supported by the state to augment um, the resources that we would have now. This is very, very important. And as we are, we are in a dual emergency, both a public health and public safety. And many of our people are um, duly responding to both emergencies. And we are very um, resource restrained, particularly in our police department. Officers are working double shifts after uh, working a special uh, seven day work week. And uh, we need as much support as we can to be able to rapidly apply to these changing dynamics. I shared with uh, the commission this morning that there were over uh, 40 cities that have curfews in place and that um, and other resources that they're utilizing to respond to um, um, these public safety crises and riots. And we need the ability, uh, if needed, to quickly enact uh, tools that will help us to manage this. Um, there were questions about our whether or not we were um, able, why weren't we able to respond with the um, 300 officers that we had with uh, up to 3,000 to 4,500 protesters uh, on Saturday. And I asked the police chief and his staff to uh, continue to think about that question. And without compromising our uh, safety and security of our police department to uh, give some further insight on what we need in order to keep our community safe. So Mayor P. allow. I'll ask Chief Payne and his two deputies, both uh, Chief Kittle and Chief Reifenberg, uh, to come online and to explain why we need tools uh, that can be acted by the state of the emergency in a rapid manner in order to uh, help us respond. Chief Payne, is your are your deputies online? Yes, sir. They're on also. Um, can they turn their cameras on, please, Chief Reifenberg and Chief Kittle, and say hello? Hello. Okay, thank you. Go right ahead, Chief. Yes, sir. And thank you, uh, City Manager and Mayor. Uh, I think you really summed it up um, well that um, that was a rapidly evolving incident, and we had prepared for a peaceful demonstration. And as we know now, that turned into not a peaceful demonstration. Um, the 300 plus officers that responded that night were responding over a course as that incident was developing. Some came in as late as two, three, four o'clock in the morning 
uh, to have enough personnel to get it to the point where uh, things had calmed down. So having the ability for the mayor to act um, in an expedited way is crucial for us to be able to um, um, respond to these incidents. We do have mutual aid with other law enforcement in the area, uh, but sometimes we may have to go outside the area for law enforcement also, that we do not have that. And by having the uh, ability to declare the state at that time, um, it would allow us the flexibility to be able to um, call on other resources to address the, uh, the situation at the time. Um, Deputy Chief uh, Kittle is our operations uh he oversees operations and the deployment of officers. Um, uh, Chief Kittle, can you add to what I've, the manager and I have already spoken to, uh, the necessity to be able to act in a swift manner to get resources in? Absolutely. As the, uh, the chief mentioned, we were prepared for a uh, peaceful protest on that Saturday night and uh, obviously turned violent on us. We did have to uh, issue um, a couple emergency texts to our uh, all available personnel to come in. We had officers coming in from uh, that were several hours away on vacation. Uh, we actually had uh, about 10 officers at a uh, wedding of two of our officers that they had to leave that wedding. And uh, just to the kudos to the newlyweds, they actually showed up the following day to assist us uh, with the continuing events. Um, we had some officers working that first night uh, up to 24 hours straight due to the schedule they were on. Um, ultimately, over the last couple nights, we've had over 300 officers staged and ready for, uh, for anything since we were not quite sure what to expect. Um, I can tell you as part of the event on Saturday night, we had some uh, fairly difficult times. I was uh, specifically standing near one of the doorways as we watched hundreds of individuals trying to breach our building. Uh, despite the number of officers that were on the other side of the glass from them, uh, they didn't seem to uh, worry about that. We are continuing to prepare for uh, protests uh, throughout the week. I can tell you from a staffing standpoint, it is very challenging. Um, our officers uh, continue to work 16 to 18 hour days, uh, despite having additional personnel being called in from some of these surrounding agencies, which we are very appreciative of. Um, we've had uh, five to six officers killed in protests throughout the nation, so that is obviously concerning. The hours our officers are working are uh, fatiguing them, as well as the concern for their own safety, as well as the safety of the community um, that we're trying to protect. Um, the curfew, I can tell you, was a valuable tool the last couple nights. It has helped us uh, maintain a, a safe community, um, and it, uh, again, has been very valuable. And, uh, it would help as a tool moving forward as well. Not sure if there are any other questions, Chief, that you want me to cover? No, let's see if uh, Chief Reifenberg, do you have anything else to add? Thank you, City Manager, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, I, I think it's very important that uh, everyone realizes that, that when we're on scene, we're there to protect people's First Amendment rights and for them to be able to peacefully uh, protest. Uh, that's extremely important for us. And uh, having the ability to have reserve forces when we have these events uh, gives us the ability uh, to plan properly to protect our city. Um, and then also to have that force, the, the police department, we want to police our city. Uh, the events that occurred on Saturday night, uh, we had to ask for mutual aid to take calls the following day. Uh, that's not what we want. We're your police department. Uh, we want to serve the citizens of our community. Uh, there's a group of agitators that we have intelligence on that is moving around the city to different protests. And although people have uh, very good intentions to have a peaceful protest and have that plan, uh, these agitators are coming in and causing more issues. They've had issues in the city of Jackson, the city of Lansing, the city of Kalamazoo. And we don't know when these individuals are going to come in, into our city. Uh, to, so if we have a good plan and we're able to execute that plan, our goal is to be safe, uh, both uh, personnel and property. Um, citizens Grand Rapids are the most important thing to us, and, and that's truly at the heart of this request. 
So, Mayor and, and commissioners, and I, I we will respect any decision that you make, and we will do it to the absolutely best of our ability. But it is my job as city manager to make sure my employees have the tools and resources to do their job and to do their job safely and to protect our community. And I can tell you right now, we are not properly resourced for what our intelligence anticipates may happen with all well-meaning intentions. And I don't want to sound like an alarmist, but I do want to make you fully aware of both the intended and potentially unintended consequences of us not being able to uh, immediately respond uh, to what we know and can prepare for and anticipate. And the, the tr what we have seen now with Kalamazoo doing, taking, using the tools we, we use to keep their community safe and other cities, we are, we are trending the opposite way from what other communities are doing across the nation. New York City, the, city, the city that never sleeps, has implemented a really aggressive curfew. I believe it's a 12-hour curfew. I might be confu confusing with LA. But to, that, that, that is the seriousness of uh, how cities across the country are trying to uh, get a handle of it. And many of them are overwhelmed and understaffed and under-resourced because you don't want to over-police and use uh, extreme uh, use of force if there are other methods. And the more staff you have, the more we can make sure that we are respecting people's rights and using the appropriate use of force in these uh, incidents. So with that, uh, we are all available to answer any questions that you might have. Mayor, Mayor, and, and yes, it, there you are. Thank you. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight and providing that additional information. Uh, I'm going to turn it to my colleagues uh, to answer questions. Commissioner O'Connor, uh, did you have your hand up? Oh, I have Commissioner Moody. I'll start with Commissioner O'Connor and then I'll go to Commissioner Moody. No, I just I just want to say, uh, Mayor, I think it's important that we continue to uh, to have this uh, of emergency and to uh, provide the flexibility and the authority to to act swiftly in the event that uh, we need to uh, to reinstate a curfew uh, or call in additional resources uh, from other agencies or from you know to, to recall the national guard. I know it's uh, the, the the perception of of those big vehicles in our town you know creates uh, creates some tension with certain people, but I also know that you know having talked to a number of folks in our uh, police department that. They are they're they're overwhelmed. They've they've been worked uh, extremely hard, and and uh, you know we ask our folks to make good decisions, and it's hard sometimes to make great decisions when uh, when you work as much as they have under the highly stressful situations that they've they've been under. And so, trying to balance the uh, the desires of our community to to try to de-escalate some of the the, the police and uh, the community, and at the same time make sure that we are prepared in the event that. Uh, Folks uh, from outside come in and, and and agitate and cause problems and and begin, you know, wreaking havoc on our community. And so, so I know that uh, uh, our police department has asked for additional resources, and I'm not the policing expert; they are. And I, I want to make sure that they have at their disposal, in uh, in any time of need, as much resources as they have to make sure that people and property remain safe. But at the same time, I think it's important that we have to take a moment to to try to let our community begin healing if it's if it's in fact ready for that. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Moody? Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. Uh, and thank you, City Manager and the Deputy uh, Chief Police is the Deputy Chief Police, um, Chief Payne. Uh, I had an opportunity to be downtown on Sunday and I went through various areas of our city and I've seen the destruction uh, of downtown. Uh, I think that downtown was uh, strategically hit uh, with a well-planned group that infiltrated itself into the um, uh, groups that were there to march for peace. Uh, I'm in favor of what the city manager and you, Madam Mayor, are in on doing. I do not want the uh, curfew hour to go from 8.30 to 5. I would prefer to stay at the same time from 7 to 5. So that gives the police department an opportune time to clear the streets just in case something occurs. Uh, 
Nobody knows policing better than they do. But I want our city protected, and I don't want uh, the mob figure out different areas of the city that they can go to and begin to do destruction of the areas. That's my biggest concern. So thank you, Commissioner. So Commissioner, I want to I want to make sure th um, that that it's clear. So what's before us is is an extension of the state of emergency. It would not reenact the curfew, uh, but it the curfew is one of the tools that under the declaration could be utilized if deemed nece necessary. Uh, and I appreciate you being clear that you are supportive of the of the curfew, but I want to also be clear for anyone listening that that isn't the specific thing that we're talking about right now. We're talking about the extension of the uh, state of of emergency. I I, I understand. Okay, I thank you. Sure that we don't dismiss the curfew. Ah, okay, thank you. Thank you for for clarifying. I, so I want to make, I feel like this morning there was a little confusion. So I want to do everything I can. Doing it for this virtually is a little challenging. Uh, and so I want to make sure that, that everyone is clear. Um, others who wish to weigh in or ask questions of our chief or deputy chiefs or the city manager or even city attorney. Uh, Commissioner Lanier. Thanks, Mayor. Um, so just, just so that I'm clear, and I think in the comments that were previous previously made by Commissioner O'Connor has kind of thrown me into confusion. So this, um, the emergency or the state of emergency, um, there were a number of items on the list of what could transpire um, under the emergency. And so I know what I, the feedback that I provided to you that um, we also talked, to, talked about that the commission could convene um, two thirds of the commission in the event that we needed to um, enact some emergency action. Um, and so I think, so I'm supportive in general of most of the items that were there. I think it was 9, 11, 12, and 13, where I was um, wondering if, if, if we would be able to have some discussion, two thirds of the commission to have some discussion before you before you personally would take action on those items, Madam Mayor, um, because those were, I think, were the items where you can enact the curfew and um, um, closing. Um, I can't remember, it was multiple people, I don't have it in front of me, but um, stopping multiple people, three or more people from gathering and things of that nature. So I think in those instances, similar to what happened on Sunday, um, there was dialogue as, as quickly as it was in light of the emergency to just engage the commission so that we could talk through this is what you're considering and this is why you're considering it. Um, so, um, and I don't know if if there's room for doing that with those with that caveat or if that's something that you'd be willing to say you'd be willing to do. Um, but just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that and to make sure that I'm clear about like you just um, restated that this isn't the authority to extend the existing um, curfew that we had, but really just to make sure that we have multiple tools available during this emergency time for um, um, the police department and the city manager and yourself to be able to enact whatever you see that was a part of that list. And I do want to go on record as saying that I'm very supportive of um, our police department and um, engaging with other neighboring agencies, especially since we know we are a regional location for many of the smaller cities that are, um, I think, you know, there was an arrest made of someone who does not live in the city of Grand Rapids, but maybe Granville, for example. And so to be able to tap into the resources of the other neighboring cities, I think is wise because we know that everybody who, who's going to come downtown is not going to be from Grand Rapids proper um, and may not even be from our um, state, quite frankly. So I think it's important to be able to give that flexibility so that we can have more um, people and personnel available to address the crisis that we're in. Yeah, uh, thank you, Commissioner. I, I'm gonna let our city attorney uh, reply to the question you posed earlier. I do think I haven't had a lot of time to talk to her about it, um, but what I did hear is that it, it it may be challenging to do that. Although I think we can come up with a process where where there is 
rapid communication to the full commission. Now that uh, I think there's a lot of things that we learned from this past weekend, and uh, I, I think we can do a better job to make sure that the full commission is uh, regularly update as things progress. And, uh, and so we're thinking through that as well. Uh, but I'll let our city attorney specifically speak to uh, the idea of pulling out pieces of it. Uh, and then maybe uh, one of the deputy chiefs can speak to uh, the mutual aid that we have been receiving. Uh, I, I know that un unfortunately, some of our surrounding cities are also concerned about protests in their city and they've actually done some proactive work already to prevent it based on some of their intelligence and things that they're hearing. Uh, and so uh, I believe that the, the partnership with the county, and I, I don't wanna speak too much about my understanding is partnership with the county and the state, especially the Michigan State Police has been incredibly helpful. Uh, so maybe we'll start with the city attorney and then uh, turn to one of our deputies to answer that question, both the questions. Uh, city attorney? Certainly. So the way the charter is set up, the commission is required to ratify the extension of the um, proclamation to um, for the uh, mayor to extend a state of emergency, state of civil emergency. That's where the voting comes in. Um, but those items that are measures that the mayor can use under that authority during an emergency those do not require a vote by the commission. Certainly, um, you can do updates and have discussions about them, but they don't require a vote. To require a vote, we would have to do a charter amendment. Um, does, does that answer the question, um, Commissioner Vanier? It, it does answer the question, but it, it's now causing me to wonder what was it that we were discussing earlier today? Because I thought we were going to vote for vote to extend the existing curfew. No, no, there's no voting to extend the curfew. The voting is to extend the proclamation to um, for the um, what do I want to say? The emergency, the state of emergency. Right. So all of those measures under that, the curfew right. and those other 13 things, those don't require a vote. Right. So what the mayor, I believe, has committed to do is make sure she has those discussions with the commission, but to allow for a vote of that, you have to amend the charter. Yeah. <laughs> It, the other discussion that you may be thinking about is we were talking about if we had to have a special meeting. Is that okay? No, so, it, it was this. It was this item, and it wasn't on the agenda. And I remember saying, if we were supposed to vote on it, it's not on the agenda. So, okay. but but I, I I'm I'm understanding now um, what's intended. Um, though it's been like the mayor's already said, it's been kind of confusing in the delivery of it, but. Okay. We are being asked to just vote on the emergency, and then components within are not necessarily items or individual item that can be voted on. And so it's it's now then up to us to have our mutual um, understanding of the delivery of some of those items between us and the mayor and how those things will be handled. Should she and the city manager believe that some of those items would need to be enacted? Yeah, and Mayor, if I could um, respond, I think one of the things why you, we want to do this is just to make sure we, we have the swiftness to uh, respond. And, and some of these instances may happen at 10, 11, 1, 2, 3, at 10, 11 o'clock at night, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And gathering five people may be uh, somewhat of a challenge at different hours of the day and evening whenever. Um, decisions are being made, particularly if we're trying, if we see something happen in the middle of the night and by eight o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock, we'd like to have resources deployed. You, you want to have as much flexibility as possible to have rapid decision making during an emergency event. And so I, I think um, I think what what we um, and I, I would I would check with the city attorney, but it would probably be more appropriate uh, for staff uh, update than deliberations outside of uh, a public forum 
uh, for those conversations to occur about what's to be decided on uh, before the, the declarations are occur. So perhaps it's, it's a staff uh, check-in update in terms of giving, if there's a significant change in the future and, and all the commissioners want to be aware of what, what's what's occurring. And and Commissioner, I, I want to follow up as well. So on, on Sunday morning when I was communicating with all of you, um, I, at that time, I said we have a scheduled uh, city commission meeting on Tuesday, and um, at that time we would revisit both the state of the emergency and the curfew. And I know I'd heard from some of you who had some some concerns about the curfew, and so that is why I thought it was really important that we talk about that, knowing that what I enacted on Sunday uh, it expired at 5 a.m. this morning, uh, and so to me. I, I really believe in uh, process and making sure that all of us are uh, working together and united as we work through this. Uh, and so I thought it was really important that we have that discussion this morning. And then, yeah, so I'll, it looks like you have another question, maybe a follow up. And then I'll also uh, allow maybe one of the deputy chiefs to reply to your question about mutual aid. Yeah, thank you. And, and it's actually, um, uh, it's a, uh, piggyback on the mutual aid because I'm, I didn't, do we need this um, emergency declaration in order for them to um, receive mutual aid? I would, I would have, I was under the assumption that in the event that there isn't, that they would deem it's an emergency that they could call on other agencies. Um, you know, think of an incident in particular that transpired where multiple, multiple is where multiple agencies were present. So it, as you're answering that question, if someone could just answer that as well, it's a requirement to have this emergency for mutual aid. Commissioner, um, we relied heavily on Ottawa County, which we do not have an agreement with. Um, the sheriff um, sent them over and um, I actually, uh, Sunday afternoon or Sunday sometime, I had to send him an email advising him we were under a state of emergency at that point and um, to allow us to use those resources. We actually were looking at uh, as far away as Lansing, um, we had had contact with them and they were going to send officers, which we do not have mutual aid. Surrounding area, we do have mutual aid, but it would give us the flexibility to say to those agencies that we do not. Um, we're under a state of emergency declared by the mayor. I am requesting under her state of emergency, your assistance. And, and, and perhaps uh, Chief Lehman could likewise turn his camera on and explain um, from the resourcing and cost recovery um, perspective how that, that's beneficial uh, to us. And while he's doing that, the other, um, the other uh, undisclosed and yet uh, to be determined, we wait till we see the cost of um, labor for our officers uh, who have been working, um, at, as uh, the, the chiefs have said, a lot of overtime. And um, at, not to try to get no cost labor, but some of the state resources uh, that we get do not cost uh, are, are not charged to us. So, um, Chief Lehman, are, are you are you uh, on the call here? If you can't, we can't hear or see you. Um, Chief Lehman is not on. Okay. All right. Never mind. So, City Manager, you're saying that uh, under a state of emergency, we can potentially get uh, reimbursement for some of our costs related to this incident from the state. Yeah, that's correct, Mayor. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do either of our deputy chiefs want to add anything? Okay, I see uh, Commissioner O'Connor's hand up, and then I'll see if anyone else wants to. Commissioner? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, I just I, I want to reiterate, I think it's important, given the uncertainty of what is, uh, you know, the, the days ahead, that uh, I, I understand and, and appreciate the um the flexibility we need to make decisions quickly um i can 
and I've said to several people, I had my frustrations with uh, uh, the events of, of you know the, the mayor calling a curfew with uh, with limited communication, but. Ultimately, I think that was the right decision, and I applaud her for for taking that uh, bold step and doing what was needed to to calm uh, calm the air over the last forty eight hours. And she's been in constant communication with all of us, uh, as well as the administration, uh, trying to think about what the next uh, best steps are. And while I understand there are a variety of things uh, in the in our charter that allow her uh, flexibility, and you know whether or not we each of us agrees with all thirteen of those items. I have to put my faith and trust in the mayor at this point to to do what is best. I think she knows me, and I think she knows all of us, uh, and and in a in a well enough fashion to be able to make a good decision in a in a moment of uh, emergency when we need to call upon additional resources. And uh, if she makes a call we don't agree with, then you know, we have to hold her accountable for that. But I'm going to put my trust right now in into the fact that if we do need to call. Uh, Call in additional resources or declare one of those thirteen uh, potential points that that she could use as part of this order. That she's gonna she's gonna do best, and she's probably you know in in the ability to communicate with each of us. I'm I'm confident that she's going to do that, uh, and uh, and and in the best of her ability. But I you know I don't think it's a smart move to tie her hands. Uh, if if the authority falls on the on the mayor, then you know, we didn't create that protocol. We didn't create that statute. We didn't create that charter amendment that, that makes that happen. Ultimately, we, you know, we have a city manager. We entrust him to make a lot of decisions as the executive, as a, you know, a strong manager, weak uh, mayor form of government. And ultimately, in this, in this circumstance, this is a power that's been uh, uh, given responsibility to the mayor. And so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, you know, to trust and support the mayor and, and her uh, desires to make good decisions as we go through these and, you know, uh, days of uncertainty. Thanks, Commissioner. Commissioner Rippart? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. I think I, I just want to piggyback on that. I, I do really appreciate the dialogue that we had this morning. Even though we didn't have full alignment on what was happening, it was, I did think it was the work of good governance. Those of us who've been elected working with city staff and kind of a push pull. And now that we've had that conversation and you've heard from all of us, you've heard extensively from the community about what they care about. Uh, I do think it's imperative for us to trust the city manager and the mayor to take all that feedback into consideration. Um, should they feel that it's necessary to use any of the, pro the possible um, premises outlined in that, that chapter 161, if that becomes necessary. So, I also trust that you would pull us together or reach out to us if you wanted or needed guidance from us. So I think that this is one of those things to have in our back pocket. That's the way that I see it and hope that we'll utilize it. And uh, now that we've had the discussion that we had this morning, that open, very open discussion, then this is an authority that rests with the mayor. And I, I support um, uh, keeping this open so that should we need it, it's there. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, commissioners, uh, other questions or comments? Uh, Commissioner Assasi and then Commissioner Jones, did you have your hand up? Okay, so Commissioner Assasi. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you um, to the Chief and Deputy Chiefs. Um, I do want to share one, one comment because I believe in making sure that like I said earlier, there's, there's multiple truths. I did talk to somebody who said they were um, in front of the, the police department over the weekend. And they said that they were able to engage with that police officer, have some conversations with that police officer and felt that there was a, um, you know, a strong sense of if I wasn't here working, I might be with you, with you marching. And I think it's important. Um, you know, some of the things that I said earlier, I always want to make sure that there is not just one truth. So I want to put that Put that message that somebody reached out to me and said, I want to share my experience. And if we're going to grow community, I want to grow the community with my um, GRPD and not um, not the National Guard and not um, people that don't don't know our community. So I did want to share that. Um, you know, for me, I think. Yes, we 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 know each other, even though I've only been on the commission a short time, I, I know many of you. Uh, beyond that and, um, you know, appreciate your leadership and, and, you know, we trust each other with a variety of things. I also think that 
the charters and things like this are not put into place because of relationships. And so as much as I, um, as much as I have trust and appreciation and I wasn't in those rooms, um, I have some concerns uh, and mostly some of the ones that commissioner uh, Lanier outlined uh, around that, that could be enacted, especially when I'm saying earlier in the morning, I'm not for these things, i.e. The, the curfew and the national guard. Um, I also am going to bring up the fact that I am concerned about the messaging that came out um, from the police department about the, the journalists um, that I know Chief Payne, you said that it was for the protection. I, I respectfully went back and kind of looked at some of those messages. And I think um, that that wasn't really the message that I saw. Um, I also think that that's my concern if we go into a state of emergency or things like that going to be deemed as, as a variation of what the charter calls for. And I am adamantly against that. Um, we have we have just instituted somebody over our public um, accountability and oversight and to not have our media on the ground showing, and certainly it's not every single story, but not showing those messages to our community is a great concern for me. So um, I'm, I'm, I've, I've wrestled this with this one as I've read the, the information that was shared. Thank you, Anita, for sharing, uh, city attorney, sharing the, the details and information. Um, but I have, that I go back to some of my HR learnings and we put policies and practices in place for a reason. Relationships are important, and that is not a substitute for what's in what's in in a policy or procedure or charter. So, um, those are my concerns. I don't know that they're necessarily questions that need to be answered, but those are my sentiments around um, this resolution in front of us. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, Mayor, if I could, because um, I, I do want to. Um, I acknowledge th this concern, not only that Commissioner Sasi has, but many other people, including some of you, have also raised um, our relationship with the media. We have, that was discussed earlier, but even before then. And I have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have asked um, uh, my executive staff to, to look into that. And I, I'm doing this without the benefit of even having uh, had previous conversation uh, with uh, Mr. Matthews and Ms. Um, Snow Buckner, but I think it's very, very important for us to um, acknowledge um, our desire for the public to be informed about what is going on uh, with his government and the important use of, of the media. The media uh, was also our additional eyes and ears uh, from the Emergency Operations Center. So in addition to the reports from the officers, we rely on the media to inform us as well about things that are happening uh, during an emergency event. So I, I want to uh, lend my voice to reaffirming uh, the need for us to be as transparent as possible and collaborative as possible uh, with the media, and I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Matthews and Ms. Snow Buckner to to comment uh, on that because I think it's very important. I don't want the, the media to to think that uh, we have anything any other motive but to to collaborate with them. Mr. Matthews. Yes, sir. Um, well, I, I'll speak to I'll speak to the broader context, and I'll let uh, Ms. Snow Buckner speak to. Uh, some of the specific actions that, that have been taken. The broader context, uh, all the messaging in an emergency ought to be coming through the EOC. And uh, when we saw the messaging yesterday, uh, the immediate concern was that it didn't follow the protocols within the EOC. So we've addressed that. Um, I can tell you from, as someone who's dealt with virtually every imaginable EOC activation that you could think of outside of a, an earthquake. Um, what GRPD did last, last night in terms of really allowing uh, free reign for the, for the media within the area that they were, they were seeking to control is, is, is pretty, is, is, is pretty impressive. Uh, um, it's unfortunate that the way that the messaging got phrased, it was reflected that somehow we didn't want the media to cover the events. 
really it had to do with we didn't want the media to get directly in the way of, of the police activities. Um, I think that some of that was misinterpretation on all sides. And um, I know that uh, Ms. Snow Buckner and her team have, have spent some time talking with some of the news directors to come to an understanding with the media about how we can both uh, ensure that it, both the public servants can do their jobs and the media can, ten, can continue to do their jobs in a way that's going to keep everybody safe. Because at the end of the day, that's what we want to make sure happens. Thanks, Mr. Matthews. So as a former journalist, I am a big believer in freedom of press, and I hold that very dear. And so we, as a communications team, are committed to ensuring that the media can do its job and do its job safely. So I have had conversations with our uh, police PIO and as Mr. Matthews indicated, we have had conversations with a few news directors and we plan to moving forward. Um, this is something that we've been wanting to do, but with COVID-19 and now this, it's it, we just haven't had an opportunity, but um, we've wanted to sit down with our media partners and do sort of that crisis communications training, if you will, for a back, uh, lack of a better term to um, sort of give them a, a, a bird's eye view of um, emergency operations and how we can work together to make sure that our folks can do their job and the media can do theirs. It's very important to have those strong relationships and I'm a big believer in freedom of press for sure. Thank you. So we, we acknowledge and own that the protocol wasn't followed and we're going to work on improving. Thank you, city manager. All right. Any uh, final questions or comments before I turn to our city clerk, uh, Commissioner Lanier? Oh, and Commissioner Moody, did I see your hand up? No? Okay. Oh, uh, Chief Kittle. Deputy Chief. Uh, did you want to respond to a question now or can I go to Commissioner Lanier first? You can go first. Okay. You want him to go first? Okay. Uh, Deputy Chief? Yeah, we've had a lot of talk about mutual aid. I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to thank all of our our uh, community partners and uh, law enforcement partners who uh, did not hesitate one bit when we asked for assistance and got us all the uh, needed resources as quickly as possible. Also like to add to, uh, to that thanks to our community. I can tell you I woke up the following morning <clears throat> after the first uh, event with tears in my eyes as I watched the video of the community that was out so early in the morning cleaning up our building and all the graffiti throughout downtown and uh, all the glass breakage. So just like to thank all the community members for that. We truly appreciate it. Ms. Lydia? Yeah, so um, some of what I will share is probably going to be a repeat of things that I shared earlier today. But I, I know that oftentimes those who may be listening to our meetings in the morning may not be the same people listening to the, to the meeting um, in the evening. So please bear with me, colleagues, as it may be redundant. Um, Mr. George Floyd's murder um, at the hands of law enforcement, as, as the police officer tucked his hand in his pocket as he was murdering him, is exactly why we're having this discussion. And I don't want us to lose sight of that as we're talking about what happened in our city and what's happening nationally. Um, my heart goes out to the family of Mr. Floyd um, and I hope justice is served. Um, I too am an advocate for the freedom of speech. So I was happy to hear, I don't remember who said it, but someone mentioned that. And um, so I am in favor of those who would want to um, exercise that right and being able to do so and not necessarily in an organized fashion that the city may deem as the right way of doing that. I think because they have a right, they should be able to do so. Um, I am still interested in learning more about other agencies that we may invite into our city um, to know if they do have body cams, if those can be worn. Um, obviously, if they don't have them, um, then they can't wear them. But if they have them or if we have extra body cams, sorry, my dog is barking. 
um, that they that they would be warned so that um, the policing that is happening um, in the city of Grand Rapids could be similar to the policing that typically happens. Uh, we've been working for a number of years on trying to address a lot of issues in our city. And I don't want us to be in a state of emergency and forget about all of the work that we've done to be able to have the, the level of com community and police relations, though it still needs some work, um, but we have come a long way and I don't want um, us to be in this crisis and, and miss the opportunity. Um, I am still not in favor of having the National Guard in our city, um, as we talked about um, earlier this morning, um, the federal government tweeted about um, the direction that is being given to the National Guard, and that's um, if you loot, then shoot. And so I have no interest in having that type of um, behavior in the city of Grand Rapids. And I don't know, um, obviously, when they come, they're at the direction of the leadership here in our city. But I also know that they have a higher directive potentially coming from someplace else. So I don't know the mentality of the National Guard and how they've been directed to police as they're going into these cities. What I do know is that as they've entered into multiple cities, we've seen worse riot outcomes with their presence. And so that's one of the reasons that um, um, requesting um, the National Guard to be in our city gives me personal pause. Um, and then as it relates to the curfew, I think, you know, we talked about this a little bit earlier where, you know, we have been under the executive order of the governor of the great state of Michigan. And um, as Governor Whitmer was um, lifting her executive order, we were instituting um, a, a curfew. And so, though I do not, let me be clear, believe that the people who were downtown who may have been involved in any of the looting um, were involved in it because they've been cooped up. If that were the case, they could have done all of the rioting weeks ago, but they didn't. People are fed up and that's part of why the looting happened. And we also had agitators and instigators who were involved and that's why they led some of the efforts to start the looting. And I think we just had followers who just took part in, in, in a process because the opportunity presented itself. Um, but because of that, you know, we're restricting where people can go. And um, and so I, I would want us to put um, the same type of tactics that were in place the last two nights during this curfew period um, in place with other agencies, neighboring agencies, um, as long as we think we need it in order to keep our city stay safe. Um, and then... Um, the last piece is the subjectivity that exists with the curfew that was um, enacted. You know, I talked earlier about Commissioner Moody's neighbor who was jogging. And I know, Mayor, you know, as we were having some exchanges about it, you were saying it really is so people won't gather. Well, she was a lone jogger and she was stopped. And there were other joggers who didn't look like her and they weren't. And so that's the, that's the challenge that I have because our data in our city, um, because we know the data, says that we police communities of color differently. And, and when we police people differently and equity is embedded across all of our strategic planning um, pillars, when we treat people inequitably, we get these types of results where people are going to be frustrated at the outcome of it. And so those are the reasons that it's challenging for me to institute a curfew and then have people feeling as though they're being treated, well, knowing that people are being treated differently than others. And we have no way of explaining why and when that happens. And so I just, I just wanna make sure that I share those things again. And I know there was conversation about um, dismissing charges and, and I believe that anyone who is involved in, in unlawful behavior should be penalized as such. I don't want it to appear as though I am supportive of, of people throwing anything at the police, vandalizing um, um, private property or public property um, in any way, shape or form. I am interested in those persons being arrested the way they would be arrested um, in, at any other time. And then the last thing is really about the timing of communications. I thought what came out was good information, but the timing of it was the piece that was a challenge. 
um, understandably understanding that we were in the middle of kind of this um, emergency crisis. So I just want to mention those things. And so I, you know, I think um, Commissioner O'Connor, your comment about trusting the mayor, I think um, that is what a voting for this is about. But what I want to be clear on, Mayor, is that, you know, this body this morning, all but one of us said we had no interest in the National Guard. All but one of us said, well, all of us said we didn't want the National Guard and all of, all but one of us said we didn't want the curfew. And I think those are last resort if you are able to um, get the authority to exercise this, because those things were things that we said we, we did not welcome. Commissioner, I, I appreciate you uh, sharing that and also uh, summarizing some of the conversations that we had as a body this morning. And I, I assure you, um, those are all things that I wrestled with on Sunday before I made a final decision. And it weighs on me and I, I take those very seriously and I hear those concerns. And uh, I, I just want to assure you of that, that all of our discussion this morning, uh, it, it will carry with me as we hopefully work together. I am praying that we do not need to enact any of these. Uh, but what I do think that we need and what our department needs is the ability to identify other resources throughout the state that can back them up right now. Uh, yeah. And that, that, that is something I think that is, is really important. Uh, I, I agree with that, Mayor. And the other thing I was gonna add, I'm glad you said that is the idea of being able to be reimbursed for um, all of what it's going to take to get us through this, um, this emergency time. I think it's important for us to be able to access additional resources to be able to do so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. Any final uh, questions or comments before I turn to our city clerk? All right. I'll turn to the city clerk to call the question or to call the vote. Commissioner Isasi. No. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. No. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. It carries. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, and please know that I will be working with the city team to make improvements on all the things that we talked about, including communications. I think we have learned a lot together over the last uh, 36 hours, and now is a time to, to really make some improvements as we move forward. And as I said, I am very hopeful that we'll continue to see uh, uh, safe protests and, and people coming together safely to lift up their voice. Uh, I, I'm, that is my, my deep, deep hope and prayer. Uh, if that's not the case, I do believe that we we'll be able to provide additional support to our police department to make sure that they have the resources they need to respond appropriately. Um, so thank you all for that. All right, next that will take us to our last opportunity for, oh, we don't have any pu scheduled public hearings tonight. So I should have said that earlier. Uh, so that will take us to our last opportunity for public comment tonight. Uh, and I will turn to our city clerk uh, to see if Danny has anyone in the queue. Yeah, just a reminder for people to all call in, it is uh, 311 or 456 3000, press one and then press four. I gave the mayor the wrong information. So it's one and then four. And I know we do have some callers in the queue. So go ahead, Daniel. Yes, we have eight callers in the queue. The first caller should be coming through right now. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. Greetings, Mayor and Commissioners. This is Sam Jones Darling. My Michigan residence is in Ypsilanti, Michigan. However, many of you know that I am a native of Grand Rapids. I currently reside in London in the United Kingdom, where it is a bit after 1 a.m. So imagine how much this actually means to me. Normally, I would send you my communication by email. However, I appreciate this opportunity to address you verbally. I want to start by noting that the Deputy Chief said that they wish to preserve the First Amendment. It's simple. Mayor and commissioners, you need to tell them if you harm the media, you will be terminated, period. And this should include community media. End of story. Hold the city manager and chief accountable to ensure freedom of the press is preserved. 
observe. I live in a progressive and world-class city. They don't use police forces to intimidate, harass, and use excessive force against communities they supposedly serve. They actively de-escalate the situations, just, not when, not just when cameras are on, but when the cameras are off. This weekend hurt me deeply. I've watched my friends live in absolute terror that the city's actions in bringing in the National Guard was going to bring death upon them, especially given the makeup of the Michigan National Guard. Demographically, it's very white, very rural, and these soldiers are known to be general instigators. For some, the short-lived curfew enforced by the National Guard was useful, but in reality, it just was another perpetuation of the criminalization and death of black bodies and a destructive tactic toward the First Amendment, especially peaceful protest. This has terrified many, especially the use of the Ottawa County deputies and other policing agencies that have a horrific history of race-based uh, attacks on minority communities. Body cams must be worn when the riot gear is on and accountability must be had. I want to just note that as I grew up, I had the opportunity many times to meet Chief Payne when he was a patrol officer. Uh, I remember one of my family friends bringing him around, and I trust the man deeply, and I know members of the community do also. It's time to stand up. It's time for Grand Rapids to be that place that I remember as a kid, be that place that I would want to bring my family to when I am done with my educational pursuits. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing what you all do for the betterment of Grand Rapidians. Thank you. It's good to hear from you, Mr. Darling. Next caller, you're on with the City Commission. Please lower your volume. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Caller. Caller. Hello. We seem to be having some trouble with this. Caller. Caller, we cannot hear you. Um, please try and call back. I'm going to disconnect the call. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, Mayor, City Commissioners. Uh, this is Rick Horky in Grand Rapids. Um, first, I would like to agree with the sentiments from the first caller. Um, sitting through this meeting, I am alarmed by how little discussion is being had about the systemic issue of racism and punitive policing that has always been impacting communities of color in Grand Rapids. This, coupled with the tragic murder of George Floyd, has led to the outrage and despair you've seen from the public. Public support and trust in the city's response is dwindling, and our communities of color deserve so much more. I am here organizing for the People's Budget of Grand Rapids. We're a new group, but we are growing rapidly and have already gained attention from national and local media, as well as other um, organizations as this movement grows nationally. We are here to ask City Council to call an emergency meeting regarding the budget set to begin July 1st to discuss the people's budget. In short, the people's budget advocates for reducing police funding and increasing funding for public services that improve quality of life for all, particularly those in the black uh, community. We know that Grand Rapids intends to cut $22 million from public services by fiscal year 2021, besides in business resiliency and public safety. As part of that budget, we also know that the Grand Rapids Police Department intends to end a program used to gauge residents' a sense of trust and safety in the police. We support Link Up's petition to reconsider, strong, strongly reconsider this cut. We would like to expand on that petition to ask that the roughly $1.2 million um, from my estimate, being cut from the police department is cut in other areas, such as the acquisition of military-grade equipment. In conclusion, we are advocating for a reallocation of the police budget to cut in areas outside of that proposed cut mentioned, which we strongly, strongly encourage remains. Additionally, we want to see an increase in funding for public services that help people 
especially the black community and other disenfranchised citizens, not just businesses, because we believe that increased public safety comes from increased public services for all. We will be organizing to hold your commission accountable to this goal, and we will be um, keeping up with communications and hopefully negotiations. You will also be uh, hearing from my fellow organizer, Dom. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right, next caller. Caller, Hello, my name is you, yes. have, you have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Emily Carbonell Ferguson, and I am from here, Grand Rapids. I live in Baxter neighborhood. Um, this is the first city commission meeting I've ever listened in on, and it's kind of hard to keep up <laughs> with what all is happening. Uh, but the thing that is a bit disappointingly clear to me is that the very people that we are talking to when we protest or when we lose it a little bit <laughs> are you. Um, you're the one who can change what's happening. And uh, I am a young white person who started some of the gentrification that's happening on my street. And I'm kind of waking up right now. And uh, last year, one of the scariest experiences of my life was seeing a black man on my street with four cops with guns pulled on him and two police vehicles. I wasn't even in this situation. I was just standing there trying to make sure that they knew that somebody was watching, and it was the scariest thing. The point is that we do not feel that our police is here to protect us. And if the messages that you are sending do not center that first, there will continue to be issues. If we focus only on curfews and bringing in the National Guard and the ability to react swiftly, we're missing the point. And it makes me scared and angry because we see what's happening nationally. We see it's not something that's gonna go away. And the fact that the why behind the protest was not the main point of today's meeting is really disappointing. I in my email sent several specific things that I'm expecting that we will do or, or clarify to me that are already being done within our police force. Um, I have concerns about how we are funding them currently and how we are taking the power out of our community's ability to manage itself. We also went through that experience. I was there when things turned from peaceful to not peaceful. And it is not as simple as a few white dudes that were there to incite violence. Why were they there? Because they knew that they could use the presence of the police as a wall for us to kind of crash our bodies against. If the police presence is not addressed as a part of this, we have not addressed it. And unfortunately, I, I just don't see the specific Caller, that's ways in which we're doing that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for coming in. All right, next caller. Dave. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, commissioners and mayor. Uh, bless. This is Maggie Smith. Um, and I'm calling with a request. I'm a resident of um, uh, the city's third ward. I'm calling with um, an urgent request that we, that you, our elected officials, focus. Um, on the actual emergency at hand, not whether our police have enough funding um, and flexibility. Um, uh, I'm asking that you focus on the following types of questions, um, and I'll share a brief experience, which is that uh, from the meeting this morning, I noticed that um, there seems to be a lot of faith between you and our GRPD. I do not share that faith, and I haven't for some time. I suspect that there are thousands, if not more, in our city. Um, the showing of 4,500 people showing up on Saturday shows us that I'm among a significant critical mass that does not have the space. Um, and I'd like you to think about why you 
allow them to earn your faith. Um, I, I didn't have faith in them when um, an officer's racism led to an almost deportation and the GRPD found little wrong with it. I didn't have faith with them when two children had a police officer pull a gun on them for walking in the street, and the GRPD um, had to be prompted to respond. And um, I didn't have faith in it last week um, when you were earlier this week, when there was tear gassing of our own citizens um, and for what happened to Mr. Phillips. So what I want is a police force that will disavow um, shootings and killings like that of Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, Laquan McDonald, and the many, many thousands that have occurred in just recent years. Um, and that's what I think that I would like my commissioners to look for too. Um, and I want to also uh, offer a couple of recommendations in, an, in addition to that urgent request. Um, I want to first offer a correction. One of the gentlemen from the police department said the phrase that there was a threat of a breach of our police building. Um, and I don't know what his turn of phrase meant, but the hour should be mine and the rest of my um, citizens and residents in Grand Rapids. The police department is our police department. Um, and so I also want to recommend that I know that we are dealing with a lot of overtime with the police. And one option is for the police to stand down and not use these retrograde policing tactics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Maggie. All right, next caller, Daniel. Caller, can you lower your volume, please? You're on the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Eric John Chapaniak. I live in Alpine Township, but I grew up on the west side, right by John Ball Zoo. Um, and I wanted to bring up two topics for you um, that are both related to this issue, but also uh, thinking more broadly about some systemic things. Um, first, it was mentioned by Commissioner Lanier earlier uh, that the, the folks that came into Grand Rapids um, to assist GRPD, um, not all had body cameras, or we should be making sure that those that have body cameras are using them. Um, so a couple of examples uh, where you can, your voice can be powerful in, um, as an influencer in our community, I mean, the broader uh, West Michigan community is asking um, through resolution that, that these uh, municipalities get body cameras. Kent County Sheriff's Office does not have body cameras for all officers. Wyoming Police Department does not have body cameras for all officers. Um, Ottawa County does, which was the question I think that commis the commissioner asked, um, and Ottawa County is one that does. Um, but those two, I know you work closely with, that can be something where a, a request from the city commission um, might go a long way um, and convince the sheriff or city council in Wyoming to, um, to enact that, to figure out how to budget that out. Then I also want to discuss um, some thoughts on rental housing policies that came that come from the city of Burien, Washington, um, as well as Seattle, Washington, and many other states now. Um, I have a link pulled up from a friend that I know on the council in Burien, uh, and, and their main thing is they, that they've uh, created a housing ombudsman that helps um, work with folks that are at risk of being evicted or helps folks um, understand their rights uh, when they are threatened with eviction or facing eviction. Uh, and so that might be a really good opportunity um, thinking long-term for you to invest in uh, ways to do more progressive um, housing policy. I know it's been a discussion for a long time at the city commission. Um, but let's not also forget that that does relate to the protests that we saw this weekend, um, as well as many other issues where uh, black residents feel um, slighted, and rightfully so. There are so many pieces to this, but one might be uh, more progressive housing policies, and I'll put that in an email address to you thank, all. So you have thank you, Eric. That's three thank minutes. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next caller. 
Uh, caller, you're on with the city commission. Oh, wait, I think I'm from that much. Yes, thank you. Uh, Go ahead. So, uh, excuse me, ahead of time, if my thoughts are a little jumbled, I didn't write anything down. But I first want to start by acknowledging uh, the humanity behind the commission, behind our city government. You guys are just human. I recognize this. Um, I think it's important to incorporate that in the discussion just as much um, as it is to acknowledge the core of what we witnessed in the last 48 or so hours, and some of us for a lot, lot longer than that, you know. Um, I think one of the things that stands out to me from what I'm hearing right now is I don't feel like the city government is acknowledging the burden of proof that you have. And I'm not speaking in a legal term or anything like that, but really just um, when you are doing a unilateral you know, action such as like you're establishing a curfew, you're bringing in the National Guard, you're doing this all within the context of us being in a lockdown already. And then, you know, from the AM meeting to the PM meeting, about five of you will change your mind. Or I'm, I'm exaggerating, but, you know, a significant portion of you guys changed your mind is that, you know, now I agree with the National Guard. I'm, uh, uh, Mr. O'Connor shifted a little bit on that. You know what I mean? Like, we want to know what you know. You say agitators, that's pretty broad and non-specific. And you, again, context is super important. Like, you have to think about the core of this uh, protest, and by extension, the riot, was from police brutality. As a reaction to that and uh, not being prepared, I believe a disproportionate response was brought in when we have the National Guard. People are going to want, and then the reasoning behind that is uh, agitators. There's no specificity behind that, and people are already incensed enough to protest in the first place. It almost seems like you're making an unforced error by making more agitators because it's giving people a thing to fight against, really. So I, I guess I'm just saying, like, uh, it's very important, the transparency issue, and just being able to uh, know what is factoring into these decisions, especially ones like this where we're seeing we're, a lot of people are feeling uh, on the face of a government that we didn't even know was possible. So I think it's just, you know, along the way, I understand that everybody's human. You're doing this for the first time. But it's very, very important to me and a lot of other people that we know exactly what is going on. If you see adversaries, then describe them. Tell us what is going on exactly. Uh, that's uh, all I have to say. Thank you guys for serving us and everything. And um, appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Daniel? Yep. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Mary Ann Daly. I am in the second ward. And I would like to say that I agree with what you did Saturday. Saturday night, I thought you made the right call. I thought Officer Payne did great. You know, no, no, nobody on the commission remembers the riots in Grand Rapids in 67 and 68. You know, it's, uh, it's sad because of what I hear, heard from other people calling in. You know, everybody wants to blame everybody else. But I sat here and I watched the whole thing on TV. And I cried and said to myself, what are they doing to my city? This is my city and your city. I've lived here all my life. And I may not agree with everything, but it's still my city. And I do voice my opinion. And hey, God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Daniel? Caller, can you lower your volume, please? You're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Commissioners, and city staff. This is Rodney Brown. Um, just want to get right to a couple of uh, points. First, may, may God be, be with uh, each of you all and really be with us in our community during these uh, trying times. Um, we pray that the wisdom of our elders and ancestors as well um, guide us um, through these um, trials. 
uh, most importantly, let's um, work together and continue to um, love this community and love uh, humanity. I think we're missing some opportunities, um, although I appreciate with each of you uh, the time that I've had to talk and those who have met um, with me. Um, but I appreciate um, even more so those that have acknowledged um, George Floyd and that this has been a blatant murder and that this murder is tied into the hateful rhetoric and the escalation from Pennsylvania Avenue and those white supremacist cronies um, uh, throughout this nation. Um, I want to encourage you strongly, uh, Commission, to um, um, show courage and leadership and expand the powers of the Civilian Appeals Board. Uh, the Civilian Appeals Board needs investigatory powers and subpoena powers and the power to um, issue uh, findings. Um, through the uh, time that we're, we're taking to reflect on um, all of what has happened, um, I am uh, looking at a 1998 community forum on race relations in Grand Rapids, Michigan Advisory Committee to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. I would encourage you all um, to take a look um, at that. It reflects on the work that we did 25 years ago to help to get the Civilian Appeals Board um, established, um, although there was an end around uh, from the mayor at that time. Um, to take it to a vote of the city commission as we were attempting to gather signatures uh, with those powers for the Civilian Appeals Board. Um, and so notwithstanding all of the good stuff um, that you intend to do with the Office of Accountability, the Civilian Appeals Board still needs those powers. That is the first domino uh, in terms of when we're looking for accountability um, with our uh, police department. I would encourage you as well to look at the 1968 Kerner uh, Commission uh, report um, that was in response to the 1967 uh, riots um, as well and see if that uh, we can learn from that. Um, you know, lastly, I would say this, um, that the lack of funding for the multiple neighborhood associations in the black community, 49507 specifically, and, and those uh, communities that most need uh, support with all of the dire data that exists, if you are not supporting those multiple neighborhood associations that did not have uh, funding, then you are indirectly supporting caller, that's three institutional minutes. racism. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Thank you, Mr. Brown. All right, Daniel, next caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have, please turn your volume down. And your time starts now. Caller, you're very, you're very faint. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Madam Mayor, point of order, I'm sorry. I could not hear that last caller. Um, I could hear bits and pieces of it. I don't know if anyone could 
summarize what was being said because I like to capture notes from all of our public comments or if the caller could come back with the you know fixing the technology because I couldn't hear hardly any of what was said I'm sorry thank you it was a little a little broken up and uh, I think this is a good time also to encourage people to contact us uh, personally or in writing as well and very often when people come to speak for public comment they'll follow up and provide us their comments in writing and we also welcome that uh, especially I know that these virtual platforms make it difficult uh, but that would also be an option. So thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Daniel, next caller. Mayor, can you mute, mute your mic? That might that might help. Yes. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Great. Thank, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Brian McCourt. I'm a part of Grand Rapids. I am um, in the corporate world. Um, myself and my family were downtown. Um, Saturday night for the protest, and it's quite clear there's two, there was two protests that took place. The first protest um, was very peaceful and showed a very strong moment of solidarity. So listening into the city commission meeting, um, I think there's good work and good debate being done about running the city, but it's quite clear that there's a clear lack of visible leadership to the rest of the community. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is if you look at cities like Denver or Atlanta, um, or even in Flint, the leaders of the city, which would be the mayor, the GRPD police commissioner, the rest of the city commission, are actually going public and showing solidarity together. To me, that is leadership. And again, I don't mean it as um, um, an attack or a judgment, but I think the actions right now are being shown that the the city commission, the mayor, the GRPD, and the city commission is not showing um, solidarity, and it's showing disconnect and creating a challenge. So my challenge, and again, you've heard a lot of comments today, so I'm just going to net it out. My challenge to the leaders on this call is if you really believe in leadership, you need to find out how to how to create a moment of solidarity very quickly in the public view, including with protesters, taking a knee, having discussion in the public area, and really take a moment for leadership. The city's gone through a lot. You're doing an incredible job, but you're missing what it means to be a leader. Thank you. Caller, can you please lower your volume? You have three minutes with the yeah. city commission. Your time starts now. I'm trying to lower my volume. Can you hear me? It's perfect. Go ahead. I'll, I'll restart the clock. There is someone already talking on the computer. I don't know if there's a lag or not. Shall I just go ahead? You tell me when to introduce myself. I will. <clears throat> right now, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Martha Cooper. Um, I appreciate the ability to speak. I have been watching what our city's been doing and how we've been handling the pandemic. It's been a tense situation. I want to say that I've been coming for a long time, speaking for the community that suffers the most when it comes to housing. I have seen systemic racism in this city. I know for a fact that before this ever happened, that in our city, it has been cell phones showing the brutality of the police handling children and then having to answer for it. And now, it's kind of like watching them be afraid instead of being out there. I want to commend the solidarity that I saw in my community, who I am so proud of and love so much, that happened in the march earlier in the day, all the way down to little kids, white and black. And if anyone had fallen, there were other people to bring them up. Where there was a lack of police protection during that march, we were protected by volunteers that are trained to do marshalling for parades. And those volunteers have been present at the parade that I reached up and said, you want to talk about a lack of resources? You saw, call it resources. I'm going to tell you what it looks like to the people in our city. We have the military in our city. That's what we call it, the military is threatening us and our liberty 
And we've also seen the over-police presence for years as the man spoke about data. Uh, no, Sunita, I want to just thank you so much. You were hitting all the right. It's, I agree so much, and I'm grateful to see you getting feisty and standing up for your community because it is clear that the constant pushing aside when we run out of money, the first thing we cut is a million dollars for the police community relations. And that shows this community exactly what's going on. Before I run out of time, I want to say that instead of like in Flint, where they walked with the protesters and no bad things happened in anywhere, black communities have a right to be desperately upset. It's in Flint. But here, you guys, I saw a choppy video that was live. All of the police that were down there had maybe 200, 250 from what I had heard from people that were watching. We had a police, we had a live video, and they started up all their sirens all at once as a show of force and intimidation to a crowd Ms. that is Ms. already Cooper, upset with the police. That's three minutes. There you go. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Three minutes. There you go. Thank you. Caller? Hello? Yes, your time starts now. Go ahead. Hi there. Um, my name is Robert Coy. I live in the second ward. Uh, I've been struggling coming up with what I wanted to say. Um, Part of me wants my words to be very abrasive and very um, venomous towards our city leadership, but instead I really just want to share my perspective on what the past 36 hours has been like as a young black man here in Grand Rapids. I work for a local nonprofit, um, and on Saturday we were over at Garfield Park finishing up our tree giveaway event. Afterwards, feeling the need to do more to I had heard about the peaceful protest happening. I felt like I needed to do more. I uh, headed over to the Baxter neighborhood over at Eastern, and I started picking up trash around the neighborhood for a couple of hours. During that time, I had an older gentleman come out of his house. After him and I had a discussion about why I was doing this, you know, what it was that I was trying to accomplish, he left and came back and he brought tools, he brought his weed whacker, he brought his lawnmower, and he continued for about half a block to help me pick up trash as well as mow some of the overgrown areas around that around that block. Um, not too long after that, I had another young gentleman pull up on his bike. Me and him had a, a lovely discussion. He actually got my number. Um, you know, having that experience, having those two separate experiences, having two other black men come up to me and share in this grief, but also share in, in this action was something that was so important to me. And then Saturday night, Sunday, seeing the city leadership and seeing the decisions that were being made, the fact that the why of the protest has so easily been glossed over, it makes me so angry I can't, I can't really find the words for it. The last thing that I wanted to leave with is that there is an equity profile done of Grand Rapids by the Kellogg Foundation. And in it, it says that today, 63% of the Grand Rapids youth who are 18 and under are people of color. Compare that to 21% of our city seniors who are 65 and older are people of color. So what you have is this massive racial generational gap. And I think why that is so important is because if you take that gap and you look at the events that have, that have been happening that happened Saturday, you're getting two very different perspectives from those two different groups of people, two very different viewpoints. And so when Grand Rapids says, we see you and we hear you, my only question is, which group, which of those two groups are you actually seeing and, are, and, that, and you're actually hearing? That's, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Caller, can you please lower your volume? You're on with the city commission. 
You have three My minutes. My line is closed. It's down. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. I'll restart the clock. You have three minutes. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, to the mayor and to the commissioners. My name is John Saverson here. Um, I was born and raised here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Just to kind of give you a quick background of um, uh, the family that I come from, my father, Dr. John Hare, was the first African-American male who was elected to the Grand Rapids Public School Board back in the 80s. Okay. Um, from there, he ended up becoming Dean of Admissions at Davenport College. My mother, Rosie Saverson Hare, for 41 years, uh, headed up the clinic of Baxter Community Center here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I am from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I live right here in the Third Ward in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I attended Ottawa Hills High School. I'm 53 uh, years of age, graduated in 1985. I attended uh, Ottawa Hills and also an advanced computers class over in East Grand Rapids um, because I excelled in that, and East Grand Rapids was the first uh, school here in Western Michigan that had a hard drive copy back in the day, Fortran Pascal. The point that I'm getting at is that I have experienced growing up as a child for all those years, just riding my bicycle in the city of East Grand Rapids to go to class between Ottawa Hills and back and forth during my junior and senior year. I've experienced as a youth in Grand Rapids being pulled over in a vehicle, um, being accosted, um, being threatened by Grand Rapids police. And these are things as a 53-year-old male I had to deal with and overcome. And I really have to share that this year, 2020, and what I've seen as an African-American male has been appalling and it's frightening. Back in the early 90s, in 1993, I started working at Wood TVA in the engineering department and worked my way all the way up to camera director. If you want to Google it, you can. The point is, is that I've even seen as an African-American male the profiling, the racism in the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan, even working for a media company and seeing through the eyes of what was going on in my community. And the reason why I'm taking this time to give a phone call right now and really voice my opinion with the mayor and the commissioners is that I'm concerned about what happened the past two days ago. I don't want this dialogue and communication to get lost into the rioting, but to focus on the fact of why it even happened. And the thought of the National Guard, which is a directive that is coming from President Donald Trump himself does not fit into the context of what we need to do to heal as a community, not as a black or white community, but as a community in a whole together. So instead of focusing on how we're going to police the situation, Caller, we really three need to... Minutes. Pardon me? That's your three minutes, unfortunately. That's okay, but I think I got the message across. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, thank you. All right, Daniel, next caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, caller. Mr. Hill, can you hear me? I think we're having a little... Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I'll restart the clock. Hi. Your time starts now. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Hi, my name is Jesse Emden Hill. I live um, in the Elder Heights neighborhood right here in Grand Rapids. Um, I'm calling today and I wanted to just speak out because I'm very concerned about the um, events across this country with George Floyd, Ahmaud Avery, um, and countless others that have been um, in recent years. Um, but in the not only over the last few days, though, I really fear that something like that could happen here in Grand Rapids. Um, I may, you know, in late May, I know I was actually able to speak or um, something like this with um, Commissioner Lanier earlier this week. There was a really extremely racist Craigslist post targeting an Elder Heights family um, and that I think actually was very was threatening, in my opinion, and I think that this was being investigated as a human rights violation. I hope events like this um, are continue to be um, investigated very um, investigated thoroughly. Um, it's very important to me. I'm still thinking about that. Um, and obviously, either the events that have happened over the last few days with the, with these protests and uprisings. Um, so I just wanted to say that there's a lot going on. Um, there's other things going on as well. And I hope that um, 
please continue to be investigated. Thank, thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Your time starts now. Hi, is this just a, a comment or is it a uh, is it public comment? You have three minutes to speak. I'll reset the clock. Okay. Thank you so much. My name is Elliot. I'm from, uh, from Grand Rapids. Um, the other night I, I saw that there was a uh, peaceful protest happening and, um, and a cop just straight up shot a, a, a kid with a rubber bullet in the face. And I, I know, you know, tensions are high right now with everything going on, but that, that guy was my friend, man. Like, what are you, what, what's going on? He's standing there. There's a whole video for it happening. And what am I supposed to do? Just be happy about what's going on. Am I supposed to feel like you guys are taking care of us as, as citizens? Honestly, like, I don't think you understand what there's, what many black Americans are going through today. It's such a horrible thing. And then I see my friend, a white protester standing still getting shot in the back of the head with a rubber bullet. What's going on? Honestly, I mean, honestly, as a citizen who wants to know what's going on, as a citizen who wants there to be peace, please tell me what's going on. And if there will be any accountability for this officer or any any sort of black Americans that are happening in your city and any protesters, please tell me. Thank, thank you, caller. And I, I am I am sorry for for being dramatic, but it is a it is a, you know. Yeah, you still have a minute and 30 seconds if you'd like to share anything else. I, I would like to share that what I saw last night and what's been going on throughout this country for the last 400 years has made me less, less interested in seeing my fellow Americans get hurt for something that they didn't do. And it's so upsetting. I have little, little, I have little support. No, I have little trust in the state to care for me, for my family, or for our for black people everywhere in this country, because this is an abomination. And I really hope you guys act before things get really bad. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Thank you, caller. Thank you. All right, Daniel, next caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. How you doing everybody? This is DeAndre Jones. I stay in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh -huh. I am calling to address some of the problems that's been going on in the community. First of all, I'd like to say um, I'm very sorry about the riot in. Um, I was there. I've been at downtown in the city um, for the past three days. I was peacefully protesting. I was the guy who did bring the armed gunmen, but they weren't white supremacists. They were constitutionalists protecting people from um, any... Um, uh, it was supposed to be 36 white supremacists. Uh, coming to uh, um, potentially harm people. And so I brought people that were willing to put their lives on the line and protect the city of Grand Rapids and the people that were peacefully protesting. I would like to say that um, with everything that's been happening with police and community relations and police beating up people around the nation and just around the city, um, we need to address the problems within our communities. Um, as in black on black crime, black people fighting black people. It's a lot of videos of People fighting each other, um, and people wanting to have the funniest Facebook comment, but nobody wants to tell anybody to stop. And so um, I'm not saying that we need to let up on the police. I definitely believe that some things should be handled with the police department, but I also believe that we need to fix the problems within our own communities. Uh, we need to stop fighting each other. We need to stop killing each other. And then I wish we would unify and come together whenever we start fighting and trying to kill each other. And when people see us unifying and we can come together when it's time to protest, but when we're harming each other in our own community, nobody ever wants to do anything about it. Um, I was there cleaning up the city of Grand Rapids. Uh, once the vandalism was there, I watched the riot happen. And um, like I've said to Mayor Bliss, as I've said to the city manager and Chief Payne and any other commissioner that I've seen, uh, if you guys ever have any panels or talks or anything that I can come to to continuously voice my opinion as I've been on a couple media platforms within the past three days. Um, please reach out to me. I'm trying to be a benevolent community leader. I'm trying to keep the same energy I always keep every time I'm at the city commission meeting. And I was giving back and cleaning up the vandalism. I was uh, helping people with their businesses. I was um, 
doing everything I could to try to show the city in a more positive light and just be that positive light um, that people need me to be within the city of Grand Rapids. So I would just love to say, um, uh, commissioner, be strong, mayor, be strong, city manager, be strong, um, and continue to do the work that you guys have been doing. And it's going to take the whole entire city and it's going to take all of the departments across the city and across the county to be able to fix these problems within our community, but also be the change that we want to see within the community. Um, I appreciate you guys having me on here. And, Thank uh, you. I just wanted That's to three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, DeAndre. All right, Daniel, next. next. Caller, can you please lower the volume on your device? And you're on with... Okay, yeah. Yep. Um, I'm Shirley Carter. I'm in Grand Rapids. Yes, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Okay, so I, I do want uh, four things here, um, right quick. Uh, internal affair complaint uh, to be addressed uh, with a phone call or email within 24 hours if there's injuries involved or 30 days if not. Release video cam of police misconduct or swift action. Background checks for police officers connected to racist groups of clans. Once assailant is under control to do, any other physical tactics are overkill and will be prosecuted, no exception. Did I do that right? Yes, ma'am. You still have two minutes if you'd like to share anything. Okay. Uh, so uh, the thing with the protest um, that, that, that was happening um, after Dark um, was told that there was some other groups or something involved, not sure if that is true or not. What I witnessed when I was there were... Uh, 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 Excuse me? Nothing, ma'am. I am sleeping in. Okay, somebody peeping in my line. Okay, so what I witnessed was that there, there was, uh, there was uh, definitely anger towards the police department. That I never made it to the Rosa Parks circle. So that's my take on that, is that I, I, I thought it needed to be more organized, uh, and then it would have been able, people would have been able to respond to uh, what they were feeling, rather than just standing there chanting all kinds of things and uh, just, you know, uh, it, it wasn't enough to uh, to to get understanding as to what our you know so that we would know that somebody heard it. It was like falling on deaf ears. So that's basically what I wanted to say. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Daniel. Next call. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. I am a Grand Rapids resident and a white business owner in the Baxter neighborhood. Um, first, I'd like to thank the female commissioners for standing on the right side of history. I'm calling to express my disappointment in the lack of acknowledgement during the last 36 hours, and especially during this meeting, um, for not acknowledging the reasons of these protests. In my time... In my business in the Baxter neighborhood, I've experienced more love and compassion in the neighborhood than any other neighborhood in Grand Rapids. The black men who check on me in my business every day, the black women who make sure I get to my car at night, the black children who help me shovel my snow and ride their bikes to visit me on their days off of school deserve better. I ask you to do better for the black community of Grand Rapids. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, can you please lower the volume on the device that you're watching? Mr. Can you? Yes, thank you. I got to turn it up to hear you. Oh, is it Daniel? It is. Yes. Hi, Mr. Arizona. You have three minutes. Daniel, this is Jimmy. How you doing? I'm well, Mr. Arizona. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Oh, really? Go ahead, sir. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I can't hear myself. Hey, I'm Jimmy. 
I'm in the second ward. I hear someone else though speaking. Uh, there might be a delay on your computer, sir. Um, you are you are live with the commission, so go ahead oh, and. I don't. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I don't appreciate a lot of things that have happened in the past to build up to where even I make comments that probably aren't the best, <clears throat> but some of them are true in reference to the police. But to compare our law enforcement as a result of an incident to uh, an individual that lives in another state and for what to happen to our downtown. I think that uh, it should be no hold bar for our Grand Rapids police to prevent that as a result of something that happened that causes a movement nationally to destroy our city. I think that uh, she Payne should be fired and that there's other people that maybe should be called in or that can take his place. Accountability, somebody said, within this meeting, and that's what Chief Payne should be held accountable. The Fraternal Order of Law Enforcement <clears throat> challenged Rohinsky when he was here, and the president of that fraternal order said that Rohinsky should listen to his captains, and, and, and those are his advisors. <clears throat> the cost of the city being destroyed, accountability should be held on Chief Payne. It was his guys that were down there. As far as putting cameras on other law enforcement agencies that support Grand Rapids, that's a line of bull, and we shouldn't have to pay for it. That's a discipline and a punishment for acts of the Grand Rapids Police has passed. Robert Moody and Joe Jones were appointed. We don't need appointing Mayor Bliss. We need elections. This is what America's fundamentals of freedoms are based on, speech and uh, <clears throat> voting. Sunita Lanier was appointed, too, to the school board. We need that to stop, period. Melinda Asasi, if anything, we're here in black and white, this and that. That's a bunch of junk. That's a struggle between blacks and whites, which suppresses Hispanic people and all other races. That's why Melissa Asasi just got there. And if you guys want a standard to look at daily, look to Melinda. It's 2020, June 2nd. We shouldn't become an auto potemic to our city destroyed. You're a bad leader, Mayor Bliss, and you need to know that. And right along with Hartwell. And you guys are all accountable, even me. But one thing's for sure, I'm not at the helm of the city. I'm not appointing people. And Chief Payne needs to be held accountable. I got a whole lot more I could say, but no matter how bad it sounds, I still do appreciate you, but you guys need to adjust. No more appointing people. Let us vote. This black and white issue, that's what it is. And it should not continue to affect all of us. There's no way that thank, 72 and 74% of the you, law Mr. enforcement Arizona. should. Thank you, Mr. Arizona. That's three minutes. No, there's one last thing. That's three when minutes. When we call, sir. we come before you, we should be allowed to speak. Thank, thank you. Not held at three minutes. You're on with the city. Please lower your volume, caller. Sure. Yeah, it's lowered. Uh, Hello? You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Okay. Hi, my name's Alyssa. Um, I'm a voter in Grand Rapids, and I wanted to use my time to ask Mayor Bliss a question because I've been emailing you, and I haven't been able to get a response. So I just wanted to use this time to get through to you because it seemed like the best way to do that. Um, I was disgusted by the video of an unarmed protester getting shot in the face by GRPD online. At this time, it has 4.3 million views. And in this light of our city being, our citizens being so frightened, I'm wondering why you're cutting the budget. What is the reasoning behind cutting the budget and funding of resources that are meant to get rid of these issues or at least fix them in some ways. I'm wondering what is the reasoning for that? And I would like an answer from you as a constituent. Uh, Mayor Bliss? The, the commission doesn't respond. This is just a public comment portion. But she has the ability to respond, correct? Because I'm just wondering as a constituent, if I can't get through to my mayor over email or over phone, how can I get through to her? Because it seems like she's ignoring me, and I think the silence says more than anything she could tell me. 
uh, city clerk. I, I don't know. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm 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 wondering how I can get through to her about this issue because I am concerned about it. I am concerned about why we are defunding these things because it seems like Mayor Bliss is siding with the police and not her constituents. And I'm wondering why you are representing us who voted for you. Uh, the commission provides comments at the end, maybe. Uh, All right. Well, I'll be waiting for the comment from Ms. Bliss on that. You still have one minute if there's anything else you'd like to share. No, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, caller. Uh, caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Jamana Mason. I am calling I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, currently living in the city as well. I'm not sure on what sector we are in the meeting because I've been on hold for quite some time, but I just wanted to come to the line and voice some of my concerns regarding some of the police tactics that have been going on recently and responses from a lot of the authoritative figures in the city. Um, I feel like there has been a prevalent issue in this nation for quite some time, and um, it never seems to go away when it's never addressed correctly. One of the problems that I feel like we face is that there is never really recognition taken where, you know, we can actually say there is a problem with racism in America. There is a problem with racism in Grand Rapids. So first, I feel like we need to take steps to recognizing that there is an actual problem and follow that with acknowledgement. We need to understand and acknowledge the fact that this is happening. You know, a lot of the leaders have gave apologies or concerns or acknowledgement to it, but it, it never really seems sincere. It's after the riot or after it's already happened, there's never really anything to hope before. I feel like when it comes to solutions as well, we never really seem to have a solution for it that has been broadcasted. I feel like these three steps have not been taken in the community. And that's why we're getting as much backlash as we have. Um, a lot of these cases go national because a lot of people all over the nation can connect to it. So George Floyd, as crazy as it sounds, probably to a lot of people, we were able to connect with that in Grand Rapids. And there is a reason why. There has not been any acknowledgement or any ownership of the problems from the GRPD. Um, and it just makes us feel as if the GRPD thinks they are the law or, you know, that they're above the law because of the simple fact of if there's an error, like with Mr. Phillips, there was no acknowledgement in that broadcast on live saying that there was a problem. So I just really wanted to voice my concerns as far as what our steps can be to implement maybe some diversity programs into the GRPD and into even the commissioner's board, just so that we can start getting a well-rounded education on different communities and different backgrounds, um, just to understand them better. Because, you know, we have people policing a community that they've never been in, that they've never grown up in, that they know nothing about. So it's very hard for them to understand. I get that we're all human, but there has to be better efforts or else nothing will change. You see, I feel as if the problem and the life that we knew before George Floyd's uprising is basically gone. We have That's a lot of people three who are minutes, upset. Caller. I'm sorry, have I reached my three minutes? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, I'm Dalen Dietz. I'm in Grand Rapids. And first, I want to say, it seems kind of absurd for me uh, that the mayor who ran on a platform of racial equity is doing so much to suppress her own citizen voices. I'm honestly disgusted with how this has all been handled by the city. The public library, honestly, had more sympathy and empathy for the voices of the black citizens in the city in their statements than any official I've seen. So on to curfews. Uh, keeping a strict curfew hurts the businesses and the people of the city. How am I supposed to do my job from 8 to 5 every day, have dinner, protest the police brutality that I have seen with my own eyes in the city? How am I supposed to support my favorite restaurant with a dinner order? And how am I supposed to go check up on my parents 
Are you really so afraid of property damage and the black citizens of the city having a voice that you'll arrest anyone and their dog after 7.15 p.m.? If it's property damage that you really fear, why are you encouraging the police to form these barricades that limit movement downtown? Why aren't they taking a less hostile approach, maybe guarding the storefronts that are so precious to you instead of forming these horrible shield walls? To me, it seems that you're more just afraid of having our voices be heard and you're not protecting our civil liberties with this. I encourage you to come out and meet us at these protests instead of hiding away behind these lines of riot gear soldiers. I need you to come be the the change the city needs right now. Help us lead this change. Help us address the root of the problem rather than letting our concerns fall on deaf ears. And that is all I have to say. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, my name is Mary Riggy. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. If you want to properly address the situation, you need to stop concerning yourself only with the symptoms and start considering the cause. GRPD needs to respond. While I appreciate the efforts and leadership of Mayor Bliss and our city commissioners, it is obviously not enough to affect change. GRPD needs to put in the work which includes, but is not limited to, accountability, each officer acknowledging their own racism, training on nonviolent de-escalation, trauma-informed training, and accountability. Yes, I said it twice because somebody apparently needs to hear it more than once. GRPD needs to listen to the angry people in their community because anger does not mean unruly. Anger comes from being ignored. And you will hear anger tomorrow, Chief. Do not dismiss it. The more you listen and the fewer excuses you make, the more trust will happen. We asked the police chief to say Black Lives Matter. He did. When he asked, we asked him to have an officer say it, he denied us that. And he backed away, refusing to stand a knee with us because it wasn't organized in the way he wanted it to happen. I understand why he denied us, but at some point, human compassion and human lives should take priority over something as petty as whether or not the protest was planned. We want to trust him, but it's hard when he dismisses sincere requests for peace. He has since said he will kneel with us tomorrow in our protest, but you need to understand that the gesture loses meaning because he is only willing to stand with us under his conditions. This can be easily interpreted as a power move, not one of compassion or empathy, which is what we need from police. Saying Black Lives Matter shouldn't depend on the situation. Saying Black Lives Matter should not be something you need to have the right conditions for. We need to talk about the fact that people in our city are concerned about safety, their safety, from the police department. Seriously, it is egregious to ignore this. Your community feels it needs to protect themselves from those that are supposed to protect them. If you want things to get better, GRPD, you have to be better. Stand with us instead of against us. Listen to us instead of backing away. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. All right, Daniel, next call. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, I'm going, I called before and I wanted to see if you can hear me now. Oh, yes. Okay, please let me know if you can, if it cuts in and out. Um, I wanted to say that my name is Marissa Sandal. I'm a second ward resident. Um, I am somebody who has worked with the GRP. Um, I have worked on staff of the city and on a city grant. Um, and I truly don't understand why the city commission chose to spend its entire first public meeting after the protest, talking about the needs of the police department and the commission itself. It wasn't until Commissioner Yassi spoke, followed by Commissioner Lanier, that the needs of the community were discussed. We also heard nothing about what the commission and the mayor have done to solicit feedback from protesters and do their work to bridge the gap between the protesters, i.e. citizens, and the police department. Each one of you serves us in that function, and yet you spent your entire meeting talking about how to better serve yourself. I am deeply disheartened to see you all shirking your responsibilities to the community of Grand Rapids and in particular, the black community in our city. I am requesting a vocal commitment from the commission 
that the next meeting will open with a substantial presentation on the feedback the commission has solicited from the protesters and from the black community. I want to note that this presentation should take its lead from the leaders of the protest, not from me or anyone else who wasn't there on the front lines putting their safety at risk. This is a requirement from the commission to recenter yourself on your job, which is to serve and protect the community first and foremost, and not the police department or the commission. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for listening. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the city commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Jack. I'm from East Grand Rapids. I'm calling to demand that you bring to justice the police officer who fired a tear gas container point blank into an unarmed civilian's face who had already been maced and did not pose any threat to the officer. To know that as a citizen of your city, I walk around town with someone who would willingly attempt murder on an incapacitated civilian is not only vile and disgusting, but is terrifying and stands against everything that this country was built on. As a future teacher, I am frightened for the children of our city that we grow up in a place where their life could be snuffed out at any moment by someone that they're supposed to look up to. I hope that as a city council, you will do everything in your power to get that criminal off the streets before he hurts someone else. As a fellow citizen of Grand Rapids, I feel like that you should make your stance publicly known. I would also like to address Mayor Bliss's response to the riot. There was one reason alone that this city was destroyed, and that was because a cop publicly lynched a black man in 2020. And you don't even think to mention that once in your response. Having young white children scrubbing Black Lives Matter off a wall is not something to promote on your Twitter, Mayor Bliss. I also think that as the mayor and city council, if you personally have not watched the murder of George Floyd in its entirety, you are doing a disservice to your constituents as you lack the shared trauma that your city is feeling right now. Watching life slip from a human body in front of your eyes while onlookers scream helplessly, being told the whole time this man uh, is, the man is, who is on the ground is at fault, is a tragedy to humanity and does not deserve to exist in this world. By, condemning, by not condemning the police's actions in your own city, you ignore the cries of your constituents and the root of their anger. You are perpetuating the system that gave the officers the officer, the authority, and the boldness to take George Floyd's life and every life that came before him. In these unprecedented times, we elect you to set a strong precedent, which is a power that you have a duty to use. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, uh, my name is Hillary. I live in Grand Rapids. I'm calling because I was really disappointed that this meeting started off by focusing on uh, what our police need and how to prevent violence when it should be focused on police brutality. Um, Hello? Go ahead. Okay. One second. Um, I heard a young man say yesterday during the live stream at the protest that he was going to return home before the curfew because he was afraid of becoming another hashtag. And I would like all of you to reflect on that um, because it's a legitimate fear and it shouldn't be one. Um, I'm also, I have a question. I want to know why our police force is waiting till today to open an investigation on the police officer that shot a man with tear gas and mace at close range. Um, I'm wondering if it's because it blew up on social media, and I really, truly don't understand why it took until today to open that investigation. I would also like to request um, not using Tear gas and rubber bullets, these can be lethal. Um, rubber bullets are meant to be shot from a very far distance and at the ground so that they don't become lethal. And I, I haven't seen that in this uh, country. <laughs> um, tear gases can also be lethal. And it's not prohibited in war. I don't know why you're permitted to use it. Um, that, is, that is all. I didn't need three minutes. Thank you, Colin. 
Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vanessa, and I am a 10-year resident of Grand Rapids. And before then, um, I grew up in a military family uh, moving all over the world. So I am calling for two reasons today. Uh, the first is to share my experience as a peaceful protester who was downtown on Saturday at the march for the murder of George Floyd. Um, I encourage you to reject the simple narrative that is coming out, that there were two different groups of protesters there. Uh, as someone who was in the crowd, there was a very specific shift in atmosphere that everybody felt when there were whispers through the crowd that the police are coming, they're showing up in riot gear, like, go home or, like, be prepared to encounter the police. And I want, I just really want to reject the fact that the, that the police showed up to help, that the, the whole reason they were there was to instigate the protesters, and that is what I felt, and that's what the whole crowd felt being there. Um, the second is that as a child of a 20-year military veteran, I have a very complex and intimate view of the role of our military, um, having grown up on military bases and having had a parent deployed overseas to fight in war twice. Um, what I witnessed in the last three days is extremely concerning to me as I've seen the police and the National Guard take control of downtown and use tactics of force and intimidation to control the community of Grand Rapids. And I want to be clear that this feels like we are heading down a slippery slope of authoritarian government, and this is not what creates abundant and flourishing communities that I expect to live in. And I really want you all to make changes in policy to uh, just make Grand Rapids the city that everybody deserves to live in. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hello, I'm John Uvari of Grand Rapids. Thank you for my time. I have an observation and a comment. Um, my observation is that today the policing of police is primarily through citizen-made video, which is then publicly shared. Without this, there would no doubt be much more uh, unrecognized heroism as well as wrongdoing. My suggestion is that uh, police gear, such as shields, clubs, helmets, carry at least some basic identification that would be visible in a video. Um, it's understood that at times it's necessary to be more covert, but as much as possible. That's the extent of my call. Thank you for taking it. Thank you, caller. Caller, can you please lower your volume? Uh, yes, can you lower the volume on your computer, please? Yeah. Okay, Hello. you have three minutes. Your time starts now. Hi, I'm from Grand Rapids. My name's Matt, and I'm also looking forward to the comment on the officer that shot tear gas in the face of a incapacitated civilian. And I'd also like to uh, comment on... Uh, tweet that the GRPD made. Um, I'll just read it off to you. To, you, to our GRPD, to our media members, it is highly advised you exit the area of the Van Andel Arena as your people are interfering with police operations. Media personnel are getting in the way of GRPD's attempts to secure the area. And so that's taken off the Twitter page from the GRPD, and that sounds a lot like media censorship. And I wonder if you, Mayor Bliss, support this kind of censorship because censorship like this will only further promote police brutality and is not a good look for our city. Um, that is all I have to say. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, caller. Mayor, that was the last caller. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, appreciate everyone calling in tonight and sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, I will now turn to my colleagues on the City Commission, and I'll start with... Uh, Commissioner Moody. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just have a couple of things I want to say. First of all, I want to thank all the callers that have called in. Um, I appreciate hearing uh, their opinions. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that someone made reference to us uh, in terms of not being engaged or understanding the 67 riots. 
Uh, I can honestly say that I remember the 67 riots because I lived around the corner from it and had a firsthand experience in the 67 riots. The 67 riots was entirely different than the riots in which we have experienced these last couple of days because there was basically no protest, but the protest was about oppression. And it's also interesting that I'm hearing a number of people talk about violence uh, in reference to the police officers. Uh, I'd like to know where those voices were in 1967. Uh, that's what I would like to know, where those voices in 1967. Secondly, yes, I was appointed to the city commission, but also I was elected on the city commission as well. I think it's important that we look at what is true and what is the most important thing uh, to our community. We cannot blame the police officers for everything that have taken place over these last few days. The community and the protesters have some fault as well. Sorry the young man got hurt. We do not want anyone to get hurt. But as a black man in this community, I have experienced racism from all levels, not just from the police department, but from a corporate level, from a civil level, from a federal level, from a state level. We have to understand that the police is not the enemy. The enemy is racism that exists in some of the people who called in their families, what they were taught, how I'm glad they're standing up. But I wonder, do they really stand up for Black Lives Matter or do they stand up for a parliamentarian government? That's my concern. Thank you for calling in. Appreciate it. I think we all have a right to our opinions, which is great. We all have a right to stand on what we know is true. We don't know everybody's story. And so we need to be careful with how we claim that a person isn't doing their job. Chief Payne and his officers did what they were supposed to do to protect the city. Now, my concern is that the whole city doesn't erupt into violence. That's my concern. It's unfortunate that George Floyd lost his life. I think that the police officers in Minneapolis need to be held accountable. And I pray that that never happens here in Rapids. So we need to deal with our racism problem. And it's not just with the police department. It's from the political realm to the federal realm, to the state and local, and even in our own homes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Moody. Uh, Commissioner Asasi. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanna say thank you to everybody who put this meeting uh, together today. For those who are here for the 29 or 20 callers that called in, um, thank you for engaging with us to the numerous uh, number of residents who reached out over uh, social media and email. Um, while I have not responded to nearly probably any of them, certainly from today, I have read them and I want you all to know that. Um, I also want to say thank you to my colleagues. Um, I really appreciate the, the conversations that we had earlier today. Um, you know, for me, when I decide to vote on something, it's really the accountability that I hold to, hold to myself and the things that I said, have said either on social media or to people or throughout the day. Um, so I know that there is a, you know, a, an alleged planned protest for tomorrow, a march um, of, of, of peacefulness. Um, I really want people to be safe in this community. I do not want to see anyone die, whether it's a direct hand of violence or simply by crossing the street. I saw a lot of people uh, as cars were driving back and forth in a lot of situations where somebody could have, you know, even just been hit by a car. So I encourage you, if you are, you know, to please think about your actions, to think about how you say, how you stay safe, how you keep others safe. You know, I think allyship during this time, I, I am a woman of color. I also have my own privilege as as um, you know, often a white passing Latina. And I think it's important to remember um, how to be allies during this time. We need to listen to POC. We need to listen to black indigenous and people of color voices during this time. We need to speak up when we witness injustice in any forms. And you know that can occur on street corners and with somebody being murdered, George Floyd being murdered by police in the city of Minneapolis. Um, and so I look for those opportunities for policy change, i.e. Um, some of the things I mentioned earlier today about some legislation that was introduced um, by, uh, co-sponsored by Senator Brinks 
around some of the MCOLs um, pieces, particularly around the duty to intervene. Um, I would like to see policy like that um, and not waiting for the state legislature. And we need to make sure we're amplify amplifying the voices of POC um, during this time. Uh, a friend put on their social media, you know, I, I prefer not to watch my city burn and I don't want to watch my city burn either. Um, and also we need to remember that, that we can't confuse the reaction of the oppressed with the violence of the oppressor. And, you know, this, this work is layered. This work is, um, is many truths. And, you know, I just look forward to working with all of you, my colleagues, and um, those that presented today, those are that are in these spaces, because, you know, I, I, I was just elected, but I keep thinking I've only really got three and a half years at this point. And so what are the things that we need to do to push it forward? Because I was reflecting on our first meeting from our uh, economic development team meeting. And from January today, the time went like that. Everything happened so fast. And so I don't want to waste any moment on the, the policy pieces, not just the attitude changes, but the behavior changes that we that we can enact here in our city. So I just encourage anybody who is out, who is um, you know, who is taking advantage of their uh, ability to engage in free speech, to do so, to be safe, to be vigilant, to watch for things around you. I, I think there's been a lot of people that I've talked to who have said uh, neighborhood associations just walking in their neighborhood together, just looking at things. What seems what seems different? What doesn't seem like what happened in Creston or happened in East Town or happened in East Hills? And um, just making sure that they're sharing that and communicating it. So I have belief in the wisdom and um, and the desire to do this work of our community, and that's you know why I didn't vote uh, to continue that the the state of emergency. And so I ask the community, I ask those who are watching to please keep each other safe. Um, let's let's speak up for the things that we we can't ignore that are in front of us every single day um, but watch each other um, care for each other create collectives of one another protect your mental health i think sometimes um maybe that's not a space for you to be in at this time maybe it's at home reflecting or reading or calling in today and i think sometimes we feel that that challenge of what should we be doing and what more can I be doing? And I just remind people to give yourself some grace that it can look different day to day. It's not always going to be the same. Um, and just, you know, and then just like, lastly, if, if anybody is thinking of coming to our city to cause that direct mayhem to do things um, to, to harm our residents, to harm our community, I think Grand Rapids is just too strong for this. Please do not come here um, and let's continue um, with this movement. And um, I hope to see you all soon in person. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner O'Connor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we've already done a lot today, so I just uh, ask people to be safe, be patient, and, and have grace with one another. And uh, you know, we'll continue this work together. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Lanier? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, thanks to everyone who called in this evening to provide feedback, as well as the um, countless emails that we've received um, regarding um, the decision that we were making today. <clears throat> I appreciate um, hearing from you. Um, I, similar to Commissioner Yusasi, just want to just highlight a couple points about um, why I did not support um, extending the emergency. Um, and Mayor, I communicated to you um, this that I was I'm very supportive of all but the four, nine, eleven, twelve, and thirteen, and just wanted to be able to have room to uh, to talk about those things without being able to. To do that, um, then you know it kind of left me in a predicament where I wanted to stand behind the elements that I shared earlier because of my um, discontent with the curfew as well as the um, National Guard. Um, it was refreshing to hear Sam Jones, darling. Um, Mary, it's probably the two of us who are um, sitting at this table now that probably remember him, and unless. 
um, the rest of you were followers of meetings, but um, it was, he sounded more mature, right? So um, it was great to hear from him. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Sam would come to meetings um, quite frequently and provide public comment as a student, um, a young student. And, you know, so you can just kind of hear his um, maturing voice. So good to hear from him. I am very interested. Um, I often call Rodney Brown um, a modern historian, and um, he shared in his public comment <clears throat> that there was a report issued in 1968 um, in response to the 1967 riots. And I don't know, city clerk, if that's something that in the archives we could find, because I'm interested in seeing that, um, just to see kind of what came we frequently talk about the riots, but I didn't realize that there was a report and it would be great to, to um, see if we could get access to that so that we can, we can read that. I see the nod, thank you. And then for those of you who will continue to exercise um, your right to be able to protest um, in honor of, of um, George, George Floyd um, and, his, and his passing and his murder, um, to bring about the justice that you seek um, in our community and across this nation, I ask that you continue to be safe. Um, though this is um, a very important issue and I understand the need for protest, uh, we are still um, in the midst of a pandemic. And um, so safety is definitely necessary. So. Um, I would ask that you make sure that you use as many safety precautions precautions to get you through um, the protest so that we're not um, spreading COVID. Um, that's a, you know, a, still a very um, alive pandemic and I wanna just offer that. In addition to that, I think similar to Commissioner Isasi, um, anyone who is here to infiltrate good positive um, protesting uh, we ask that you um, take that to a different place. Um, you are not welcome in our city um, to come to try to wreak havoc. And um, those of you who may um, participate in the protest and you see others who are wreaking havoc, um, I ask that you, if you're one of our citizens, to, to recognize that um, your voice is louder when we don't have the mayhem that transpired on Saturday. Um, because what happens is then we then there's a distraction. And so the main purpose of the protest we can becomes overshadowed by the distraction. So many of you kind of voiced that in your public comment tonight that we're talking about not the issue itself, but this other secondary issue in light of the real issue, which is um, Mr. Floyd being uh, murdered. But that happens when, um, things are in disarray. And so to bring back order, you have to have those, those conversations that are what I would consider a distraction as, a, as opposed to being able to fully talk about Mr. Floyd. So I caution all of you that if you see someone um, looting that you not share in that um, so that we don't have the same level of mayhem. And I think that um, the response that we've been seeing over the last couple of days some may attribute that to the um, curfew, but I attribute it to um, our citizens being aware of who we are and coming um, downtown to protest and doing it the way we expect citizens to do it in the city of Grand Rapids. So thank you for that. And with that, good evening, um, everyone. I hope you have a great night. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Commissioner Rapart. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you to all those who called in tonight. Uh, first off, I just, I really do want to extend a tremendous thank you to the entire city staff who's just been working tireless during this multi-layered time of difficulty. Um, I just want to say that I see your labor, your dedication to this city, and it's greatly appreciated. Um, I wanted to again center my comments in the acknowledgement of the life of George Floyd, who was murdered by law enforcement in Minneapolis, as well as the events that took place this past weekend here in our city. It's so important that our discussions and the actions that we take are informed by acknowledging how the 
black community has experienced great trauma from interactions with police across the country and also here in Grand Rapids. I know that if we do this, if we center ourselves on that fact, that it will propel us forward because black lives matter. This pain and this anger that we're seeing and experience, it's real, it's justified. And the protests and demonstrations um, in a wide variety of forms are a very appropriate response. Um, I believe that the decision that we made this morning to demobilize the National Guard and to not extend the curfew were the right decisions. They moved us in the right direction. I still believe that. And so I do want to say that given the extension that we approved this even evening, I urge the mayor and the city manager to consider that discussion and the strong feedback of the broader community that we received before using either of those tools. The core message of these demonstrations are about dismantling anything oppressive within our law enforcement systems and structures. And we have a very eager community here in Grand Rapids and uh, Senator Winnie Brinks put out a great statement on Sunday. And just one, one line from it is, let's see if we can muster that eagerness into the hard work it will take to achieve lasting justice for black and brown people in our community. It's gonna require a lot more than a broom and good intentions. So I believe that in this moment, we can build on the progress that we've made in recent years, and we can turn it into something that's lasting. So thank you again for those who call in tonight uh, and be safe out there. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Mayor. I um, wanna begin by giving a shout out to our city manager and the work of city staff. Um, in terms of the work that's been done by way of a pandemic and the um, and the events that occurred on this past uh, Saturday, and I uh, also want to um, there was a caller who made mention of you know encouraging people to watch the video uh, of uh, the death, the murder of Brother George Floyd, and I just want to uh, provide some insight uh, that. Um, I can understand where that was coming from in terms of the need for people to watch it, but I will tell you from uh, uh, from the perspective of a black man, as well as uh, this might be shared by others on the dais, um, that uh, watching those videos uh, are, is, is rather traumatic, and so uh, that's not something. It, and so, if if you do choose to do that, just perhaps do it, understanding that there is. Uh, this trauma that comes with it and so um uh, it, but it also serves as a again a, a constant reminder about the, the work that we have before us and the need to engage in the work of, of real change uh and real reform in all facets of our of our work uh whether it be a police reform economic reform education reform you name it uh, i think it's fair to say that when it comes to historically marginalized communities uh, we need reform uh, in a significant way. And so I want to um, also recognize that, you know, as the governor has announced the opening back up of June 8th, I just really want to encourage all residents uh, to operate with optimum care uh, as you, as everything opens back up. Um, if you take a look at accesskent.com, you will recognize that uh, those who are being most impacted in our county happen to be our Latinx brothers and sisters at about 40% and African Americans uh, brothers and sisters at about 20%. And so uh, there, there, there needs to be um, I think great concern as we uh, move things uh, uh, back where we're opening our city and our county back up, our state back up. And we just need to be sure that we're practicing physical distancing and wearing a mask, um, and, and to the best of our ability, just keeping that at, at top of mind because we don't want to, uh, we want to continue to see those numbers come down and not see anything spike. So and I'm a very appreciative of everyone who called in on this evening, um, as well as the countless correspondence that we received by way of email um, from uh, residents and business owners alike. So thank you very much to all. And um, I just want to close by saying how much I appreciate uh, my colleagues uh, in this work and the uh, sheer uh, degree, the, the very high degree 
of difficulty and complexity that uh, that's before us. But uh, I appreciate uh, your willingness to uh, to lean in. So thank you, and thank you, Mayor. Thank you in particular for your work, your leadership, uh, in spite of being I think, present at a time in which um, it's just really difficult uh, with with whatever decision that we make. So thank you. Thanks. Uh, City Clerk. <clears throat> just briefly, um, so one way to engage is by voting. And so we're getting into um, election season now as absentee applications hit the, are going to be hitting the mail over the next um, couple weeks. So um, if you're concerned about um, precincts, you can vote and you can vote um, safely from home. If you want to vote in the precincts, we are preparing those also for um, the August 3 primary election and the, I mean, the August 4 uh, primary election and the November 3 general election. So um, one way to make your voice heard is by voting and participating in that process and we're preparing for you. Thank you, City Clerk. City Attorney? I'd also like to reiterate what's already been said about being safe as you exert your First Amendment right, that you're safe and your um, the actions that you take are thoughtful so that we keep all of our citizens safe, which is at the top of all of our list. But I'd also like to do a shout out to our city manager and our mayor, because we have worked long hours. These have been hard days, you're talking, 12 to 15 hours at a time, and they have been in the trenches trying to um, make those decisions that will protect, or I should say, assure the protection of our citizens. No, it's not just about property, it's about our citizens, and that was important to them. And I saw that firsthand every day. And so thank you, City Manager, manager and thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Attorney. Uh, City Manager? <clears throat> Well, I, I want to thank um, all of the city employees uh, who continue to um, serve, especially on the front line on both of these two. Um, one's a global crisis and the other's a now a nationwide crisis. And uh, know that I appreciate uh, the work that you do and uh, those of you who serve um, uh, on the back line. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, providing internal support, such as our city clerk, city, uh, city attorney, and many others uh, who are who are helping to provide support. Thank you. I want to thank the uh, commissioners for uh, your very deliberate uh, policy discussion. And you know it's good public policy when uh, no one gets everything they want, but uh, the policy is shaped by what everyone uh, ultimately needs. So uh, thank you for. Um, your careful deliberation and uh, helping as us give us the tools we need to do our job. I do um, sense the pain, the anger, the frustration, the fear uh, from the public, uh, given the unfortunate uh, death of uh, Mr. George Floyd and, and many like him who have died and who have lost their life to uh, use of force and brutality. And so I want to want to acknowledge that for the community. And you, you uh, if you only listen to the discussion today, you, this is um, only a portion of the dialogue because this was not a day for me for which we were here to discuss the National Guard. I, we already made that decision to demobilize the National Guard well before the meeting today. Um, we we talked about more than just process, but real policy, which I think is the ultimate outcome of much demonstration to create change. And um, we had at least 11 additional things, and maybe some may say, well, we talked about it before, but it's just like uh, other fundamental things in life. There are some things you don't just do that are necessary one day. You have to do it every day. Uh, and uh, I am looking forward to continuing to implement some of the 11 or so uh, things that were highlighted today that we know need to be done uh, beyond just 
uh, discussing our response and the resources for the police department in uh, keeping the community, keeping the department resource. I also um, want to acknowledge uh, the concerns around trust and oversight, uh, given the uh, violence that has taken place, both violence committed by um, um, those who are agitators or instigators who are not from my community, but also the uh, alleged uh, issues of misconduct and violence that has been committed by um, police officers. And so those use of force issues are going to be investigated and we have a process you know, and it has to go through due process. So those, those, um, those officers as well as community members uh, are entitled to their rights and I look forward to uh, the outcome of all of those incidents. And so I wanna uh, again, thank uh, the public for uh, their patience and I look forward to uh, peaceful demonstrations and everyone being able to uh, exercise their First Amendment rights. Thank you, City Manager. Um, I appreciate everyone uh, and your comments. And in closing, just a couple of things. Uh, I wanna thank everyone who called in. Uh, deeply grateful for our community. Uh, everyone that I've talked to over the last several days uh, and we've had, I've had uh, countless conversations and there's still many more to come. Uh, I'm deeply grateful to serve with all of you, uh, especially during these challenging times. I believe uh, we can get through this together because of the strength of this body and your deep, deep commitment to change and social justice. I wanna thank our city manager and our entire city team who have been working hard, uh, really nonstop, I should say, between the pandemic and then uh, the current challenges that we face. Uh, and I wanna, I wanna also say that as we work to make sure that our community is safe and that people have a safe place for assembly, I, I agree and I, I too wanna make sure that we are bringing our attention back to and lifting up the reasons that brought thousands of people out in our community on Saturday. Uh, and, and I too am concerned that that's being lost uh, because of because of the vandalism and violence that took place. And I think it's up to all of us to make sure that we continue to lift up the reason and going back to the core reason. And so in, in closing tonight, uh, I too wanna center us back and bring us back to the horrific killing of George Floyd uh, and the deep racial divides and racism uh, and structural racism that exists in our country and the deep pain and suffering and trauma associated with that. Uh, and so as we move forward, I hope we, we shift our focus really quickly to action. And this morning we heard a, a lot of first steps. Uh, we have been doing a lot of this work uh, in the city uh, in partnership with so many amazing community members who are also dedicated to this work. Uh, and this morning we, we had additional additional recommendations come forward from Mr. Brandon Davis and Stacy Stout. And so my hope is that those recommendations move forward as swiftly as possible and that we continue to work together and come together, as I said, for real meaningful action. Uh, so with that, I'll thank all of you again for your work, not just today, but every single day. Uh, and I hope you have a good, safe, peaceful night. Thank you.